Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to another Saving Your Disaster file. Now, as always, make sure you read the description. If you have a save file that you want to submit to me, go ahead and shoot it over to me via the instructions in the description. So this one comes in from Jorge Franco. Hello, Potato. I'm sending a disaster file to be checked. Rather than a disaster file, it's a game where I'm stuck not knowing how to move forward. I'm playing as Magnificence Catherine, so the obvious path to victory is tourism. From rerolls, I knew I would be in a small-ish island, so to gain space, I took two city-states on my island. Um, and it looks like that was Wolin and Jerusalem, which I consider that to be a reasonable choice. I don't know if I would have made the same choice, but it was a reasonable choice. You are playing on deity difficulty, which I respect and appreciate. Um, the game has no mods besides certain UI mods. The main difference is that I'm playing on epic game speed. You can see over here, 750 turns makes that true. I'm always very anxious when playing a need to see myself leading all scoreboards at any given moment in the game. And I add extra rerolls when maybe I just need to keep playing since I would win in any case. Any tips for this? Uh, many thanks. So uh, tips are, well, here's some tips. Uh, one of the things you were worried about, Russia being in the game, that he would take all of the great people. Uh, you don't actually care about Russia taking the great people. What you really care about is Russia getting a really strong culture game. Because if Russia gets a strong, if anyone else gets a strong culture game, it makes your life a little bit more difficult. So it's kind of an interesting idea here to start with a militaristic opening for your game. I think that's actually pretty good move on this kind of a map although i will say that i do feel like you have undersettled your island um you can see here there's like there's still a bar camp down here now i do actually like the idea of going and conquering some cities um it looks like you have taken i believe gnitzo and plock from poland which actually does open you up to settle even more cities so i would say that your biggest win condition here is to let's see do you think we could get gdansk Mm, I don't know if continuing the war is the right move. I mean, like you're building harbors. Yeah, it looks like you've switched into eco mode. So I don't know if continuing to push on the military front here is the best move. I mean, you're doing well. Let's take a quick stock of your empire. I mean, you've built some pretty reasonable things. Uh, did you, in fact, get a religion? No, it doesn't look like you got a religion, but you do have a pantheon. It looks like you went for one and then failed to get one. But you do have a pantheon. What kind of pantheon did you grab? A uh, free settler is a good opener, in my opinion. Let's have a look here. I mean, you got a pretty good wonder too. You got the um, Etamananki that's going to help you keep up on science. Because here's the thing. You never want to half-ass a war. You never want to half-ass things. You always want to whole-ass it. So let's, let's talk a little bit about... Oh, I'm actually not sure where to start here. For one thing, I'm impressed that you managed to take any cities at all. This one might be a little bit hard to hold from a loyalty standpoint. Um, I'm also fairly impressed that you've managed to keep up scientifically with the AI here. Um, because I typically, the, the way that I play, I typically fall pretty far behind and then sort of explosively catch up. So something we're, hmm, something we're looking for here as Catherine is a lot of luxuries. General game concept, when you're going for a tourism victory, it's good to settle a lot of cities. Um, the more cities you have, the better. That's almost just always true. That's basically always true. More cities equals more better. So I would say the current goal here would be to look for peace you've got two options here either you fully thrust and commit to the war to kill another player or you go for peace and then expand like crazy behind the war because you've gotten yourself into a great position to where you could you could do some serious growth a big mistake here is you have unlocked feudalism and you're building a builder but you don't have the builder card plugged in so that's something that i would give you a demerit on and building units would take a very long time. So here's what I would say to you. I would say just chill. The time for war is over. Um, and it's time to transition into something else. So we're going to just do nothing with our cities for three turns. And then we'll make some changes to our government. I do think going for trade routes is a really good move. In particular for a tourism game. It's also fantastic for this kind of a game. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time building that up. You did take Ancestral Hall which is the settler production government building. I do appreciate you doing that. That's the right move. Uh, your capital is very heavily improved. And I also appreciate you going for the amphitheater. See, the, the reason why we don't care if Russia takes all the great people is because we can just get make a lot of gold and buy the great works off him. So that's something we don't even need to worry about. Always declare a friendship with Gilgamesh because he is just a bro and always get mutual open borders. You don't have to get mutual. You can't just buy open borders, but I always do mutual, okay? 
I always recommend quick deals and something you should always be doing on quick deals is looking for cheap luxuries. The AI almost always sells a bunch of luxuries extremely cheaply. And if you look up here, basically every city that moves one tile to the left gets a 10% yield bonus. So, and every time it moves one tile to the right or one thing to the right up here, it gets a minus 10% yield bonus. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this deal. And you can see two of my cities jumped up and then I'm going to accept this deal. And while that didn't bump any of my cities up, I do have access to more luxuries. And so I'm closer to being able to increase the happiness of my cities or I'm able to maintain. Okay, something else we can do is we can sell off our other luxuries and I will sell them off. Ideally, we don't actually want to sell this to Russia, but I don't care particularly who actually gets it. So I'm not sure what Russia was working on. The city already has fresh water. It's a high production city, which means it's actually a very viable place where we can start to produce settlers to grab these new tiles that we want. We've completed repairing the harbor and block. Lighthouses give extremely high return on investment, so we definitely want to go for that. Mm, I think traders are actually more efficient to be purchased. So I'm going to work on builders in Rouen because the return on investment on builders is extremely high. And there's also tiles that need to be improved. There's a fishing tile over here. There's a couple of hills in here that need to be improved. Um, just a little bit of work that needs to be done. Okay, we have access to another governor title. Uh, when it comes to governors, you have Magnus in your capital with the provision promotion. So you're going for settlers in there. And you have Pingala in Rennes, which I actually think is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. The only thing that I feel like you're missing in here is a theater square to really get the most out of Pingala. Yeah, that's actually totally fine in the midterm. You have Victor for loyalty over here, which is a great move. You're in a heroic age. You have monumentality, which is a big win. I'm shocked you haven't. Well, that actually changes some of the calculations here because then we don't need to buy our builders. Let's come in here. We're going to drop equestrian orders. We're going to drop professional. Are we going to take conscription? That's fine. Retainers is also a great way to transition away from a military um, game because you can then make use of all of your military units as amenities. The two things that we really care about right now is colonization and serfdom. We want to settle as many cities as possible. And every time we settle a city, we'll get a free builder. And we want those builders to be five charge. Bish bash bosh. Easy. I do like that you were autocratic legacy. It's not my favorite, but it is better than the oligarchic legacy. Okay. There is a trader finishing in Wolin, which I appreciate. And we are going to have to deal with this caravel. I think Liang is a really useful governor to always have like one to two points in, especially in a game like this. It's also extremely viable to build a mausoleum in almost any naval game. Almost any. And it's almost always the right move to put a upgraded Liang in that city. So I'm going to have a little bit of a think about the city that I want to build the mausoleum in. It's probably going to be Jerusalem. So planning Jerusalem out, we're going to go for the mausoleum. We will go for the Kilwa. And between them two, we will go for the theater square. That's the goal. Well, actually, this isn't the best city to do it in because it only has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles. And it has a lot of really good working land tiles. But the reason I want to build it in here is because this is a city that could actually build the Kilwa and, and the mausoleum in a reasonable number of turns. So not ideal but it is what we're going to do. Alternatively, this could actually be a really good Reina city if we do Harbor plus Commercial Hub because Reina doubles the adjacency of both of those things and they actually, they scale off each other. So like if I place these pins, you can see that you get really good adjacency. It's plus eight gold, which then gets doubled by Reina and then you can pick up more gold with Tax Collector. So there's kind of fun, fun things you can do at Reina here. I do think this, this, this could be a Reina city, which means Rens is my mausoleum city, which means I need to take productive tiles from other cities and I will need to chop here. Uh, I'm going to purchase a builder in Rennes and one in Rouen so I can get some of these working. When it comes to settlers, yeah, I think this will be my Reina city. I'm going to build a galley to protect the harbor from this caravel is the goal. We'll figure out the Kilwa city later. It's not important to me right now. This, the reason that we want to get the mausoleum is because it gives you plus one science, plus one faith, and plus one culture and all coastal tiles, which actually scales really nicely with Pingala's 15% increase in science and culture. So this is just a really good science culture city. We will want a theater square in here. We'll just have to figure out where it will go. Not particularly important at this juncture. I think it's fine for you to finish building the builder. You will need it. Talk about Rouen. You have a harbor. It's fully built. You have a nestled mountain here. A few things we need to talk about is like, how do we transition into a, a culture victory in our current state? Um, so we need to talk about a few things. In particular, let's get started by talking about our, our civilization. We built wonders better 
which is good. And we get more tourism from Wonders. So we definitely want to include Wonders in our game plan. We also get plus two culture on improved luxury resources adjacent to chateaus or theater squares. So when we're settling, we want to be settling for luxuries. We don't want to be settling on them. And that's because uh, once you get flight, things like plantations, which will get, you know, plus two culture from us, we'll get a little bit of tourism. So it's a, it's a slight optimization. It's a slight, I, I wouldn't say it's significant enough to be like, oh, you need to focus on this. Uh, but it is good enough to, to be worthwhile. And it also combines nicely with the chateau, which gives you plus two culture, plus one gold, as well as appeal. And it gets culture for every adjacent wonder, which it improves once you have flight. And it gets plus two gold if it's on a river edge. And you get tourism at flight. So very, very good. All sorts of like wonders, luxuries, and chateaus are like the three things that we want to be thinking a little bit about. So like maybe a chateau could fit in here later. I don't know if chateaus can be built on this kind of a river, but this would be a great spot for a chateau. Quite happy with that. And yeah, I think that's a good start. And then if this city were to build the Kilwa for me, which I think it could totally do, where am I going to put that? I guess if I put it there, I could do a pair of chateaus nearby, which would eventually, well, I might need to settle this. But these eventually could be seaside resorts. This is like, so a really a tourism victory is all about doing a little bit of planning. If I took Gdansk, I would maybe consider settling this slightly heavier. We may want to consider a biosphere play this game, which basically gives us extra power for offshore wind farms, solar farms, geothermals, hydroelectric dams, and these buildings and improvements provide tourism equal to their power. So this could be a really useful thing for us to plan if that's the direction we want to transition into. We also need to consider our tier two government. We should probably go into monarchy now. The Angkor Wat would be nice. We do have um, an aqueduct in the capital, so we could build the Angkor Wat. This would give us plus one housing in all cities. Cut into our production in the capital, though. So thinking about the city of Rouen, what do I want it to do? Well, it has a trade route. So then the only other thing that it can really do for me it, in terms of a win condition are to provide like AOE amenities or to give me a place to store great works, which means I could build a theater square. Now, if I wanted to build something else, I could, like if I thought science was particularly important for this gameplay, which is a viable direction to take this civilization because we can go for the biosphere, I could choose to go for the campus and it's a decent campus and push in more of a biosphere direction, which is fine. It's actually a totally viable way to play the game. So I think I will push that direction. And now we need to finish planning the new settlements. Um, I do think we want a settlement here purely because it's going to be a loyalty muscle. We want to settle on one of these two tiles, but not the ivory itself. And I think if we're going to settle on one of these two tiles, it's going to be on this, this side here because it's better defended. And it's on a plains hill, which will give us plus one production to the city center. And there's a slightly better harbor. Then we want a chateau or a theater square on this tile. Um, quite a sad positioning for Genizio. So generally speaking, we want to put trade routes in cities that are building lighthouses because the trade route will help us get the lighthouse faster. That's kind of the logic behind that. I'm going to go ahead and get Reina and I'm going to appoint her into Jerusalem. And once we have this galley and something else, we'll probably get to work on that. And the idea here is that this will be a really efficient gold generation city. This trade route is going to go all the way to Plock because Plock is building a lighthouse. So you use the trader, you trade with the capital and then use that extra production to get your trade routes online faster and then you start trading externally and then you can just buy your trade route buildings once they come online. We need to protect our trade routes too so I'll move a boat this way. Let's go ahead and faith purchase a settler over here to go there and we'll faith purchase a settler over here to go there. The capital has finished an amphitheater which means we should totally go and see if we can purchase great works of writing from someone. 15 gold per turn is quite expensive and um, so it might be a little bit too early in the game for us to consider that as an affordable choice. But we want to trade for production, ideally, but growth is also quite useful. This city isn't at its growth limit, so I am going to trade with Paris. Um, that'll get me four food, two production in here, and that'll speed up how quickly we get that lighthouse, right? A little bit quicker. In the capital, there's kind of a few interesting directions we can go. We do have Eastern Orthodoxy. So if I wanted to grow a really big city, which is not a completely unviable move, I could get the temple in here. It would take approximately six turns and give me a huge food growth bonus, as well as a bunch of faith. So I am going to quickly grab that because that is quite useful. Having a, having a trickle of faith can be useful in a tourism game. Taking a look at the city of Wolden, it did just complete a trader. I'm going to go ahead and build another trader because this is actually quite a productive city and it builds that trader relatively quickly. Okay, I got my builder over here. I'm going to harvest the rainforest, which will finish the lighthouse. And now I don't care about actually harvesting the bananas. So I'm going to just place the mausoleum down there. 
and I will delete that map tag. So now what I want to do in this city is look for places that I can increase my production. That's the goal. Now, in order to increase the production in here, I will need to get to mercantilism to get lumber mill on this stuff. Another way I can increase the city's productivity is with trade routes. And that might be something that we look into because the city has really bad trade routes. I don't necessarily think researching cartography right now is like a big important thing. It is nice for the gold, but instead I'm going to actually prioritize getting mass production. You are playing a coastal game and you want the production from mass production. It's actually very, very, very important. Yeah, so we're getting pillaged in here. It's not the end of the world. We lose a trade route. We'll have to get it repaired. Um, I think I can go, I can faith purchase another builder and I think it would be good to have one in plock. Let me go ahead and faith purchase that builder. That'll make use of that. And we will trade with Paris again because that will speed up how quickly we get the lighthouse, letting us get more trade routes. More trade routes means more trade routes. So on, so forth ad infinitum. I kind of understand why you were going for the caravel. I'm going to delay it slightly so that I can get another galley out. As I realize, I just realized that you were doing that so that you could fight off all these galleys that you were seeing kind of appearing, which in of itself is not a terrible idea. Would prefer to have a lumber mill on here. So I am going to come here and harvest the banana, which will force grow the city slightly. We can harvest the rainforest in Rouen. Boop. And they'll shave 14 turns off the campus and then we can plop down a mine right there. The city should be well fed from the coast. So what we really want is production. And now we've got this campus coming online relatively quickly. I'm going to steal this from the capital. It's always good to swap tiles around to spread out the productivity of your empire a little. Can't quite manage to place a lumber mill there yet. So go wait on this quarry tile. Builders here, we can start repairing some of these luxuries and then immediately selling them off for gold which will let us purchase great works for a lot less gold, thus gently bumping up our tourism per turn. That's the goal. The goal is to slowly bring our tourism economy online. Uh, we fought off the emergency, which means we can now piece these guys out. I want your cities. Okay, they're not willing to trade yet. Well, that's fine. They'll probably become willing next turn. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to do with this city, but that's not very important. City has a few viable harbor locations. I think this is a perfectly reasonable one. I definitely want a geotherm here. And I need to think about where I'm going to be building my biosphere. So the most likely place that I'll build a biosphere is, I believe, right here. And then if I put a neighborhood for the city right there. So thinking about the Etamananki, its positioning is really prime for chateaus, like a chateau right here. And then eventually it would be seaside resorts adjacent to it. The logic being that the appeal will be boosted by the chateau. This kind of a thing is good. I don't know if these can be built on volcanic terrain, but we will see. Yeah, we definitely want to get these turtles online. I mean, you just save up money. So she's looking for peace now. She'll give me 28 gold per turn plus two cities. That's perfect. Uh, I didn't mean to cancel peace with Germany. Yeah, he's willing to give me nine gold per turn. Boom. So now we've got peace out. Now, very important thing to do the second that you peace someone out in the game is to always take open borders with them. So. I'm going to take open borders with everyone here because they might be mad at you and denounce you immediately after the war. But if you open borders them right after the war, they actually typically have the disposition to accept the turn after a war. And you kind of want open borders with everyone because open borders gives you a 25% tourism boost. Now, another thing that will be important as the game goes on. Okay, it looks like there's only six people in the game. So we don't actually need to meet anyone else. We got our galley. Let's go ahead and finish cart finish cartography. And the nice thing about finishing cartography is A, it will give us caravels and B, it will give us plus two gold from our fishing boats. So all these fishing boats that I have planned, these are actually going to be worth more as time goes on. Now, I'm going to sell turtles for gold and then I'm going to buy the Kilwa tile. And then in the city of Jerusalem, I'll get to work on the Kilwa. So why do we want Kilwa? Kilwa is a really, really powerful wonder. Uh, it gives you three envoys when it's built. When you're the suzerain of a city-state, you'll receive a 15% type bonus. So you basically get more yields if you're a suzerain of a scientific city-state culture, if you're a culture, city, state, yada, yada, yada. We are going to be transitioning in the not too distant future into monarchy, I believe. We don't actually have chateaus unlocked yet, though I understand that. But we're going to be transitioning into monarchy, which will give us plus one housing per level of walls, as well as plus two diplomatic favor for every Renaissance walls and a 50% influence boat boost, which gives us basically it's how fast you earn envoys. Renaissance walls, once we have conservation, actually give you tourism. So by doing this, we align ourselves in a more of a tourism direction. Also, this gives us a boost, the um, Gothic architecture card, which allows us to build wonders faster. So I think moving to divine right here is the right move to, to push our civilization in the right direction. Let's go ahead and settle another city right here. Plus three era score for settling more cities than anyone else. Let's get the luxuries online, because again, luxuries are things that we can sell. The harbor is one of the most important buildings that we get online, because once we've built the harbor, A, we get the gold from that harbor, B, we can start building our trade route buildings, and C, 
we can we can start building our production buildings. So harbors are essential for coastal cities because it gives you housing, it gives you production, it gives you food. It, it, it turns coastal cities into powerhouses. So when you have a tile like this, it is often the correct move to swap the tile to a different city. Okay, now I could just build a plantation here and that'd be fine. Plus one food, plus two gold, or I can chop for 112 production and effectively cut down the time it takes to build this harbor by a third. Boop, easy. Uh, we can't actually build chateaus yet. I do think in certain cities like this one, the lack of hills and stuff like that makes lumber mills viable. However, we will get to conservation eventually. So it all depends on how important it is for me to have this lighthouse right now versus you know, I think this city has plenty of productive tiles, so chopping here is actually totally fine. So, boop, and that'll get us the lighthouse 10 turns sooner. 10 turns sooner means we get the trade route 10 turns sooner, right? In theory, as long as we're doing that. Trade routes are important. Very, very important. Let's go ahead and build a camp. Trade routes are particularly important if you're going wide, which we are doing this game, especially because we got the Ancestral Hall. You need money to pay for all the infrastructure. Get that plantation online. We have luxuries that we can sell. Nobody wants to buy. That's not a big deal. Neither online. Don't forget, you can also sell your horses to people and sell them you should. Making about 100 gold per turn, plus one error score, excellent. Uh, we are gonna save up a little bit of money and once we have Divine Right, we'll plug in the cheaper units. Um, I could harvest here to get the mausoleum. I think I'm gonna build the quarry instead because we will eventually harvest this later. The Forbidden City is a great wonder to try to pick up here. I think I will go for mass production instead to get the shipyards. If we can get shipyards up and running in this game, um, it'll be a big, Big moment for us. We got the lighthouse and plock. Let's quickly grab ourselves a trader. I know I'm not actually building any settlers right now, but we will. We're getting important baseline infrastructure up first, and then the settler push will come. So we're going for the growth tiles first. Um, faster the cities grow, the more the tiles that they work, more tiles they work. Faster they grow, the faster they produce, all that good stuff. When a city is below four population, I would say prioritize food over production. When a city is above four population, but below seven, I would say prioritize them equally. And then when a city hits its seven population limit, like goal, I would say production becomes so much more important than food. And that's just, that's not like based on any math. That's more of a just like, this is how it feels when I play, is like kind of how you should play. So like the first one, two, three, four pops, it's okay if they focus a little bit heavier on food, but then you slowly transition more towards production as the city gets bigger. It's not a hard and fast rule, it's more of a vibe. So we are in a normal age now. We don't have a religion, so Exodus doesn't make sense. We don't have that many things. In terms of continent settling, we could do some continent settlings for Hicks and Dracones, but oftentimes the easiest one is monumentality because it just gives you a little bit of passive, passive stuff as you build districts. We got the temple in the capital. We could get the meeting house. We could, pro I think we would rather buy that with faith. Instead, I'm going to work on settlers. Okay, trader completed in Wolan. The city of La Rochelle needs a trader to get the trade routes faster. Wolan, why don't you build me another trader? Again, because I, I have more cities that are going to be producing trade routes, so I want them kind of up. Quarries on hills should almost always be harvested. I need, I need to make a decision on what I'm going to do with this city. We definitely want a chateau or a theater square adjacent to the spices, so I think... A theater square here and a harbor here are perfectly reasonable decisions to make in the city, which then lends itself very well towards not a water park, sorry, a um, entertainment complex and another theater square from La Rochelle. This just becomes a very, a very simple thing. Um, generally, my, my recommendation when you're doing city planning is you want your cities to plan three districts, three core districts. So in the case of Genizio, that's a harbor for a trade route, theater square for great work slots and a entertainment complex. For Marseille, that'll probably be like a harbor and a campus and a water park for a little bit of tourism. Let's go ahead and finish that harbor now. Flatland, uh, flatland stone is generally speaking, put a quarry on in this particular instance, because I want to get my, uh, my harbor faster. I am going to harvest both of these. Getting trade routes online is like a big, big thing. I am going to choose to trade with Paris over Jerusalem. It's a safer trade route. There are barbarians over here in Jerusalem that could potentially threaten any trade routes I sent that direction. Hill quarries, hill, hill stone is a harvest, although we don't want to harvest on a builder. So you'll just chill there for a couple turns. Nice, we have access to education, which means we can get universities. That is something we do want to do in both Rouen, Rennes and Marseille, because we want A, the great scientist points, which, and there are certain great scientists that you can recruit later on in the game that are really helpful. Um, but more importantly, we want the, the science here because it'll help us get to the biosphere later. And the biosphere can be a great way to late game transition into tourism, particularly if you already have a strong science game. 
Random woods, just harvest. Then move the trade route to Avignon to help that city get its trade route up. And basically, this is like what I call the trader cascade. You use one trader to help build traders in other places. The earlier you build a water mill, the better return on investment you get on it. So get the water mill early. Okay, we've unlocked monarchy. Uh, the reason we want to transition into monarchy is because we will be building three levels of walls in every single city. So we'll get the diplomatic favor, we'll get the science. Uh, I'll explain where the science comes from later. And we get the tourism from walls. We also get the 50% influence bonus, um, which means we need to get our diplomatic quarter up ASAP. All right, plus two error score in here. Perfect. I think for now, I'm just going to temporarily, I really want to have veterancy plugged in. I think I prefer that over conscription. And I'm going to plug in professional army on a temporary basis, but this will be transitioned probably to Gothic architecture. Mm, yeah, I'm going to do that actually Gothic architecture right now. And we're going to plug in charismatic leader because charismatic leader will multiply, be multiplied by the influence. So now we're making 10.5 influence instead of five something, something, something. I don't remember how much we should be making. Seven something, something. I don't remember. Which will allow us to control the city state game a little bit better, especially if we can get Kelwa. Um, so getting divine right is helpful. Now we want to get basically to conservation um, on the way there. We definitely want to pick up medieval fairs. We may also, we probably almost, we, we definitely want to pick up naval tradition because of the 100% harbor adjacency bonus, particularly combos extremely nicely with shipyards, which gives you bonus production equal to the adjacency bonus and that stacks. Harbors are too important in this game not to build. So we will go for the harbor here and we want this chop to go into the harbor. I'm a big fan of Lublin flipping loyalty to me. Harvest here, that's down to seven turns on that harbor. And now we can upgrade to Caravels because we have the cash. In fact, we have just enough cash with a 50% discount. So three Caravels should be enough for us to control these local areas. I want you to trade with Paris. And then speaking of Paris, when it comes to there, once we get to 10 population in here, which is something I would like to focus on, I'm probably gonna take back some of these productive tiles because I don't wanna be working fate specialists. That will crush Rouen's production. But I don't need Rouen to finish anything very quickly, so we'll just leave it as is. Yeah, but we need the capital to grow a little bit quicker. All right, what can we sell? You want to buy turtles? Done. No luxuries to purchase. Let's harvest, harvest, harvest. That will instantly finish the water mill. Uh, we'll go ahead and finish these temples because they give us that little bit of faith. Quite useful to get. I will build a mine here for Wolin to make use of. Getting it a little bit of production. And I'm going to start scouting now with my caravels. What are we looking for with our caravels? We're looking for a few different things. Uh, this will be a mine for now, but in the not too distant future, I will change it into a lumber mill because there will be um, a bunch of seaside resorts happening along here. Similarly, this will be a mine, but it'll eventually become a lumber mill. I'm going to harvest here so that we can finish that harbor faster. Mahabodhi Temple has been built by another person. Let's go get this Mercury online, something we can sell to other players. Let's keep on fighting. We're going to harvest this forest for La Rochelle. Plus three error score for the first harbor with a high adjacency. Uh, we finished the settler in the capital. Let's get more. While I hate settling on this dies, it will get me an extra trade route. That's literally all a city needs to contribute to your empire to be useful is a trade route. Like, genuinely. I'm going to send a trade route to Gnizio. What's our gold looking like? Gold trade routes aren't very good yet. So we prefer the production. Wolin, how's things going for you? We have no more traders we can build. So we, we want to be trying to hit our trader capacity. It's okay for like one or two under. We generally want to be hitting it though. So kind of taking stock of this city, it has its trade route. It has its, you know, victory condition district. Now we can look, how can this city support our win condition, right? Like what if we got an industrial zone? One thing that we could do is we could look at the city overlap or what if the city just, what if it just made me another settler? It'll take it a little while, but it means I settle these tiles faster, right? What about Leon? What if Leon built? Leon's gone, nothing. Uh, we definitely want a harbor in here. So let's get to work on that. These two caravels, I'm going to send them together because there was some barbarian BS down here. I'm going to start distributing my weak units as garrisons. I will send my strong units to go deal with these barb camps. Harbor completed in Avignon. Um, I generally recommend getting the monument and the granary first, but we're now so close to the lighthouse that we may as well. Oh man, look at all these delicious whales over here that we could have. So we have the harbor adjacency card. That's perfect. Next up, let's grab humanism. We want the chateau. We also want diplomatic service. We're waiting for 10 pop in the capital so that we can build the diplo quarter. Uh, I think I am going to skip biosphere in the capital and instead I'll, I'll, I'll build that somewhere else. I do like that there's an, in wait, there's an industrial zone in Jerusalem. Okay, well, that means we definitely want to build a aqueduct here and then a pair of lumber mills. And that should get us like a plus seven, plus six. That's fine. Uh, harvest here, that'll finish that. We can get work on those lighthouses. Trade route to Paris. 
We've got Mount Kilimanjaro. Nice little bit of air score. Lovely. One of my carvels is leveled up, so he should be able to fight his way through this very, very easily. We do need to be careful, though. Granary we completed in Marseille. Uh, let's grab the lighthouse. Again, we want those trade routes. Trade routes scale up our empire really quickly. They give us an insane gold transition in the mid game. Um, just a lot of really good things that happen there. Why do cities want to plan for seven population? And why do cities want to plan for three districts? Well, it's because three districts and seven population line up really nicely. And it's really easy to get to seven population. It's really hard to get to 10 population, right? Like even my capital is struggling to get to 10 population. Look at how many of my cities are at seven population, right? Seven pop, seven pop, seven pop, seven pop, almost seven pop, seven pop, halfway. Whereas like, look how many, look, look, how, look how long it's going to take it to get to 10 pop. 20 turns, 11 turns. God knows how many. So it's just, it's just so much easier to plan around seven population, which is three districts. So plan around working seven tiles and having three districts for an average city, which is why we want to build a lot of cities in Civ 6. Because it's just, it's just optimally the game just kind of encourages this way of playing. Now, I could get a granary here in Rouen because the city is at its housing limit. However, it already has two districts and Building another district won't massively improve this tile. I mean, I guess in theory, right? I could put a theater square there. I could put something else there. I think I would prefer to just work on getting the library for the plus two signs, because if I grow this city, sure, it's going to grow more population. What is it going to work? Two food, one production, or one gold sea tiles. So until I have a shipyard in here, I actually don't care about the amount of housing or the amount of pop. So... I'm just going to work on a campus and then switch over to the shipyard when the time comes. I may even just buy the shipyard in here because it would massively increase the quality of the city, right? It's making six production. With a shipyard, that would easily go up to, what, um, 12, potentially 18 production. So I can triple, for a thousand gold, I can triple the city's production for the rest of the game. There are very few things in Civ where you get that kind of return on investment, which is why the shipyard in a game where you're building harbors is one of the most important investments that you're going to make. Grab that mine for the extra luxury. We should be able to sell more luxuries. Yep. And so we don't have any things to purchase. However, we can purchase a great work of writing or two. And the earlier you buy these, for the cheaper the price, the better. I know I said I was just going to save up gold, but um, we can also sell off things like Niter. Perfect. And Diplo Favor, because the World Congress is actually not that important. You're better off just selling off your, your favor. In a lot of cases let's go ahead and promote you to harbor master and now i would feel safe coming in here and spending the turn repairing the harbor for the adjacency even if it del delays the kill with slightly shouldn't be that big of a deal uh, let's pull you back to heal and we'll start fighting with this caravel if he gets attacked twice he should level if he gets attacked once he won't which will put us in danger so we kind of actually want him to be attacked twice let's settle this city it means we have another luxury we can sell and you always want to be selling them off uh, I'm going to yoink this turtle tile because it's a good tile. Uh, you go ahead and slowly build me a harbor. So now we have a builder as well that we can send off somewhere to improve. Oh, nice fishing tiles over there that need to be improved. Um, let's chop to get the lighthouse. Boop. Done. And now we can get to work on the granary, which will give this city even more housing, allow it to grow more. We can start to place more districts. Production in here isn't great. And it won't be great until we get to conservation. But that's not important. Lublin has flipped and will flip to me, which is quite nice. Okay, you got attacked only once, which is not what I was hoping for. So let's fall back to this tile where you'll only be able to be attacked once this turn. This guy will heal and then you can jump over to heal next turn as well. Um, 19 turns on the kill, but looking great. We can claim a great admiral. And this is actually a fantastic great admiral because it's Regenja Chola, which gives you plus three combat strength for all naval units. And that'll make exploration feel a little bit easier. Um, we did get the temple in here. The Watt isn't bad. So if you take a, take stock of this city, it's got a harbor. It's got a holy site. I think the only thing that it's really missing is a theater square. There's a plus two theater square over here. It's adjacent to this thing. That's perfect. Uh, I will take it. Well, could build the Great Lighthouse. Remember, we do get extra tourism from this. And um, I believe, so uh, in terms of tourism return, for a normal civilization, building walls with the wall building card plugged in gives about the same return on investment as building a wonder. Uh, so I'm thinking for France, that gets a production bonus and twice as much tourism from wonders. Building wonders is actually very valuable in terms of passive long-term tourism. You have to think, right? This phase of the game, 
is where I'm going to get my easy tourism, the stuff that's going to pay off throughout the whole game. Later on is when we go through the tourism ramp. A lot of people get fixated on the great work end of a tourism victory, which is actually one of the least important parts of the great of, of the tourism victory. All right, so let's, let's look for land quality. Keep on making those settlers for me. I do want to settle within range of this niter, but I don't want to settle on the niter. So I think this city right here will do it. The city has a decent harbor and also has room for other potential things like a great campus right there and whatever else I feel like building like a theater square. So this should be actually a really, really powerful city. So we will send our settler to go grab it. Uh, you'll notice I'm settling close to myself. I mean, if, if I were looking to, to grab land, I would spread out. But really, I, I just want to keep keep my units safe and all that sort of stuff. Keep, keep my cities nice and clumped up. The closer that cities are to each other, the better they can defend each other, both militarily and from a loyalty perspective. We do now have shipyards. Um, let's see if we can secure a little bit of cash. Any strategic buyers? Okay, we can secure a little bit of upfront cash. Gold per turn is generally better, but right now, immediate gold is way better because we can buy shipyard for 17, uh, 1,700 gold. Um, this alone right now is worth three production for this city, but that is a lot more than that in the long run. We definitely want to get to industrialization. We also need to get to Renaissance walls because we need we need to start building our walls. I wouldn't say right now, but it's soon. So after mass production, we're going to pick up castles with a view of moving towards siege tactics. We've got three envoys in the bank. Hong Kong is a decent thing to own. I think I'm going to go to level two with Venice because I'm going to start getting my shipyards, which means I'm going to get four gold per turn refund on those shipyards. And then if you take the 1700, right? So you take 1740 and uh, you divide that by four, right? It takes them 433 turns to, to return on investment. And that's only for the gold investment. Keep in mind that they actually provide production and a little bit of gold and even more production. So like this just makes the return on investment from shipyards really high. Um, and the same is true here for Vilnius when we go to otherwise. otherwise. But otherwise, right, with this envoy, I can't actually change the state of the board in the envoy list. So I'm not going to I'm not going to change anything. But I would say this player is actually um, a really decent player. And... Like, I'm not playing the game, like, super giga optimally right now. I have I have a particular style that I like that is very chill. Ve I have a very, very chill, laid back. Like, I'm not rushing to anything. Like, if I was really focusing, I would be, like, making... I would make builders in every city. I would be spamming out settlers in nearly every city. I would be chopping every single tile in my empire. But right now, this is kind of, like, what I call, like... A, it's, like, a, a laid back but focused style. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Reinforced Hull. Um, but the first thing you do before you do that is you explore a little, then you, you take the heal. Colosseum was built by someone else. It's a nice one to get, but it's not super important. It's a nice to have. You know, this could be probably an okay chateau. And so we've dealt with this barbarian boat problem, so we can send our military to a wide variety of cities as garrisons. Um, and we do want to build more military units because that card is relative all the way up until mass media or is it ideology? Retainers, retainers. Yeah, it's relevant all the way up to mass media. So we can benefit from plus one amenity in a bunch of our cities, basically every city for quite a while. So building a military unit here or there is going to be a useful thing to do. Uh, the city of Lublin rebelled. So I'm going to go ahead and keep plus two error score on that one. Um, it's in a decent spot. It's not particularly useful, so we will get to work on a builder in there. I could buy the builder, but it's not what I want to do because I want to come over here to Rouen and I want to demonstrate the power of the shipyard. Six production in this city, 13 turn on the library. Boom. Buy the shipyard, eight turns. Refresh, 11 production in here. Very, very powerful. Not to mention the extra gold that's coming in from the shipyard, right? So very, very important to get those. This will actually go up to 14, I believe, which means it more than doubled the city's production. And now, every time the city grows a pop and works one of these coastal tiles, I get plus one production. So basically, shipyards allow you to turn your population growth, aka your food from these fishery tiles, into production, which is a very valuable thing. And now I think, now that I get production from growth, the granary becomes more important because A, it gives growth, and B, it gives housing. If I had been planning more carefully, I would have gone for the granary sooner, right? Like, but. You know, I'm, I'm playing in a reactive way rather than a proactive style. Okay, nice. We found Caguana. Caguana is a great city-state to find, not because it's a good city-state, but because it's a cultural city-state and we are going for the Kilwa, which means we can get a 15% boost to our culture across our entire empire. Okay, nice. Uh, Rennes has grown, plus one era score. And uh, bonus culture from wall improvements. Yep, we have access to medieval walls now, which we will want to build. We also have humanism, giving us access to our tier two culture buildings, as well as the chateau. 
Chateaus benefit from being on rivers as well as being adjacent to wonders. Otherwise, it's okay to just pop them down wherever they will be. Plus, it's also era score. Um, also, the culture in gold isn't the worst. I do, however, recommend telling your cities to focus on food and production first because they will sometimes overwork these tiles. And I think food and production is better most of the time. And you want them to, to kind of run out of good food and production tiles before they start working these. In my opinion, it can be fine. I mean, like, here's the thing. An extra three culture per turn could be really good right now. But I don't think it's as good as production. So uh, we've got humanism. Let's go for diplomatic service. We want the chancery. We also need to wait for the capital to reach 10 population, which will is not too far away. We'll get another chateau here because it just makes this tile better. The main thing we're looking for with our caravels as they explore, and it is important to explore, we're looking for city-states. Being able to build military units cheaper with production would be super nice for us. So we're going to vote twice on that. And then otherwise, it would be nice if it was cultural city-state yields that were boosted. Okay, we got culture and production. So that production is actually important because we need quite a few more garrison units. So we can pop down here and if we plug in a unit production card, I'm going to draw professional army. What's my cheapest unit? It looks like it's man at arms. Okay, so we'll draw professional army and we will plug in feudal contract. I'll probably just make crossbowmen because it's a better defensive thing. And now in my cities, I can get man at arms or like crossbowmen really, really quickly. And I will in fact do that in cities that need a garrison. Some of them, because it's worth an amenity. And it also makes my military stronger, which means people are less likely to declare war on me because they will factor in how strong my military is before they, they declare. If the AI thinks you're weak, it's more likely to declare war on you. I don't know if there's actually like numbers to back that up, but it's definitely the vibe. Nice, we got the lighthouse in Avignon, which means trader time. Build that trader. We want to be buying our shipyards on a regular basis. Sell off everything we have for raw gold. See if we can't sell off anything else for a little bit more gold. Settle the city, Bordeaux. Excellent. Let's make sure we get the fishing tile online. Immediately go for the harbor. Very, very important in a coastal city to get the harbor up first because the trade route is incredibly powerful and incredibly important to the development of the city. We have the faith to come in here to the capital and buy the meeting house, which will get us a slight boost in our productivity. There is a luxury down here. This could be the biosphere city. Could also be a really good industrial zone city, although I already have one of those in the nearby area and industrial zones are kind of things you don't want to spam a lot of. You want a couple of them sprinkled. Speaking of sprinkling, let's have a look at our city overlap as to where we might want to put an industrial zone. The fantastic industrial zone or an entertainment complex over here. Um, that looks like a seven city industrials. Now that hits a lot. Hits a lot of cities. So I think we figured out what we're going to build here. Big AOE industrial zone. Probably go for something like oil power plant in here. Coal power plant to start with, but then ideally in oil. Uh, the reason that we want to build that industrial zone there is because we're going to be unlocking the factory soon, which is plus six production to every city. So if it's hitting, you know, within six tiles, what is that? Seven times six is, or, or, or three times, if we're hitting seven cities, right? That means we get seven cities worth of production. Seven times three is 21 production. Times two is 42 production because you get power. And then if we can make a oil power plant that's another plus three so it becomes um 63 production across my empire and um, potentially even going up to better with the nuclear power plant right with the science of the production so the occasional industrial zone is important for you to get in your empire as is the occasional entertainment complex um, but we'll we'll cover that need when the time comes okay we got another settler from paris and I'm thinking settling down here in some capacity. This could be the biosphere city like I was talking about. Like if I settled here, I could get myself a nice thingadoodle. Could also be a good industrial zone. My, my instinct is industrial zone. But what I want is the biosphere. We could do the biosphere in Wolan, which means that the city could actually go for a really good high production industrial zone. Like we're talking a plus six. A plus sixes are, are always like a nice to have. Chateau, chateau, chateau. Sorry, I'm just doing a little bit of planning of like my late game tiles. So this is kind of what my empire is going to look like in the late game. And, and we're basically optimizing for tourism. So lumber mills on hills to give adjacency to seaside resorts. So let's send a settler down there to get it. Uh, we've got five turns in the capital until we want to build the Diplo Quarter here. So I'm going to go ahead and use those five turns to just quickly get a trader um, because we're waiting for the 10 pop. All right, let's go here and you squiggle down this way. Zhang Qian increases trade route capacity by one. Foreign trade routes to the city provide plus two gold to both cities. Um, so let's go ahead and pop him down here. That extra trade route is very helpful. We can almost buy another shipyard. 
which is the goal. Pop down a fishing boat. We like gold. We love gold and fishing boats equal oh, gold. We found the Great Barrier fixed. Reef. So this is just kind of basically how I would play it. Oh, okay. So you cannot build chateaus on this kind of terrain, which is fine because we can just put a mine there. We got another settler here in Wolin. Wolin. We'll send it over there to claim this little chunk of land. Um, and there is a decent harbor right there. It would take Wolin 20 turns to make another settler. So we're not going to bother with that. Instead, we have a commercial hub. We have a theater square. What would be the third district in here? I mean, we could get a campus. There's a plus three campus right there. Again, really good for a biosphere game in particular. And also for an archaeological museum game if we go for Mary Leakey. So I do think getting campuses can be a viable way for us to transition into a culture victory. We got the granary in Genizio. This shipyard isn't particularly powerful, so we don't need to rush it. Uh, the city will never be very powerful. Or rather, let me rephrase that. The city won't be very powerful until we have conservation. So I'm going to place the theater square and then work on ancient walls. Why am I doing that? The ancient walls will provide tourism later in the game. And placing the theater square will lock in its price at a cheaper level than if I were to place it later. Because the price of districts increases the more technologies and civics that you research. But if you place it, the price never changes. So you can see, actually, Poland has denounced me. But because I got open borders with them before they denounced me, I can still go into their cities. Uh, which is kind of a fun thing. Always be looking to declare friendships when you're in a tourism game. It's a very valuable thing to have. Is because when you declare a friendship, somebody can't attack you, which allows you to fully focus on your eco, which is basically the entirety of a tourism game. Um, the harbor is completed in Lyon. We go immediately for the lighthouse. Trade routes are everything. When you're developing a coastal empire, you need to get that trade up. Um, in the near future, if I go to the available routes tab and I search by gold, you can see the gold generated by these trade routes is starting to skyrocket. And it's once you start getting around the shipyard area that you might want to start considering sending external trade routes. In the city of Rennes, we are going to get ourselves a shipyard. This is a plus three production shipyard. The city is working a lot of coastal tiles. It'll go from 8.1 production all the way up to, uh, once I refresh the UI, 15.3. So we practically doubled the production of the city. Looks like we're also needing to buy luxuries from the AI. So we will go ahead and quickly do that. And that'll bring our cities up out of negative amenities. So this is actually 17 rather than 15.3, whatever it was. Very, very important that you keep your cities out of negative amenities. It's not that important. It's not that important to get the plus 10% because minus 10% is actually worse, like so much worse than plus 10%. Um, because the simplest way I can imagine it, if how do I explain that it's actually worse? There's like a mathematical reason why you don't want to be on negative amenities. And it's it simply as follows, right? If you have 100% production, you're taking one turn per turn, okay? If you have 100%. And that's flat amenities, right? That's great. That's where you want to be. If you have a 10% amenity bonus, right? You have 120%. That means you're taking 1.2 turns per turn. Say, so right, that's the best... That's the best you can get. If you have a minus 10%, let, let's say, let's use a more extreme example. If you have a minus, um, if you have an 80%, right? Because you have a 20% penalty, that means you're taking 0 0.8 turns per turn. Now you might be thinking like, oh, that's fine. Like, because now, like here in this example, for every 10 turns you take, you get 12 turns worth of production. Like you might think like, oh, well, I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm two turns behind, but it's actually worse than that. Because what we actually need to do is we take, in order to get up to 10 turns of production, you actually have to take 12.5 turns. So like a minus 20% yield penalty is actually a 25% turn penalty. And the same is true for the 10%. It is actually worse than the stated amount. It is so much worse. And that's because if we want to actually take you know, if we want to get up to 10 turns with a production, right, we have to take 10 and divide it by 0.8. Uh, you, you do that math, right? 10 divided by 0.8 and you get 12.5. So, yeah, it's rough, okay? A percentage penalty is worse. Um, and kind of similarly here, you can kind of do similar math if you do 10 divided by uh, 1.2. Is basically every 8.3 turns, you get 10 turns worth of production, but you, you can't do a point, you can't do a tenth of a turn. You know what I mean? Like, so anyway, look, point of the matter is you never, it's, you don't have to get positive amenities. You never want negative amenities because it's actually so much worse than you think. Like, so much worse. 
I should really, I should really do a video on the math of amenities. I'm gonna write that down on my Trello. Okay, I have a trader over here in Paris. I'm gonna put it into Nantes. Uh, the city is now a 10 population. Let's get to work on the Diplo quarter. Why are we building the diplomatic quarter in the capital? The reason we're building the diplomatic quarter in the capital is because all of the cities are sending trade routes to the capital. The diplomatic quarter is one of the unique districts in the game that includes the city state, the government plaza and the diplomatic quarter in that it gives plus one food and plus one production to international trade routes or rather two sorry two domestic trade routes also the diplomatic quarter gives us plus one envoy if it's built next to the city center so we're going to build that right next to the city center and the diplomatic quarter buildings the chancery and the consulate increase your influence points per turn and that does scale i think you can get a plus five total and that does scale with the 50 percent influence in here so we're actually gonna get 7.5 influence per turn so diplomatic quarter important to build in your capital particularly when you're doing a capital feeding game trade routes to the capital in addition to that we already have magnus established in the capital and we can go for surplus logistics to get a bunch of food to our internal trade routes it's probably a little bit late in the game to be going in that direction but that is something we can do probably going to do something like a diplomatic quarter into well, Grandmaster's Chapel would allow me to build a military, but I think the thing to go here is either Foreign Ministry or Intelligence Agency, and I like Intelligence Agency for stealing stuff. Foreign Ministry is great for era score, though. That's the one thing I will say there. I'm going to put a mine here, even though that will eventually I'll have a district on that tile. The mine is mostly just for, you know, reasons. Okay, trade route with Paris. Perfect. For food to production. We have access to diplomatic service. We're going to be able to build spies faster using Machiavellianism. Vissel banking can be really useful when you start doing international trade routes with city-states. It looks like Russia is going to be settling some stuff. That's fine. But we do now have access to the Chancery, as well as the ability to do resident embassy. Um, with our friends, we should immediately take resident embassy. Um, okay, looks like we got a couple of things blasted in here. Let's get that theater square. It's good. Uh, looks like the wonder we were building was crushed. Well, let's go for the Colossus. We can transition over the 141 production into the Colossus. And if we don't get the Colossus, that's fine. No big deal. NBD. Now we want to get mercantilism so we can build lumber mills and rainforests. There's a couple of areas where that would be useful. For example, here. It's not a whole lot of areas, but it is useful. Uh, we can settle Calais. Immediately get started on the harbor in Calais. Harbors are an extremely powerful building because it allows you to transition to all sorts of other things. Gold is production but it's empire-wide production. That's the way I want you to think about it. It's production you can move around. It's like builders, right? You can build a builder in one city and move it to another city. So gold is a really, really great resource for developing a lot of cities because you, I can pile money into Bordeaux and then Bordeaux will make a lot of money and then I can pile that money into Calais and then Calais will make a bunch and you get this cascading effect of your empire becoming nigh unstoppable economically. And so that's why we go for harbors first. You can make the argument that... Um, the monument and granary have like really good returns on investment and they're good to pick up but we already have a really strong culture line so it's not completely necessary you can it is a, it's a totally reasonable thing to do brilliant we have access to kilwa now um i've explained how this wonder works like a bajillion times it gives you three envoys when you first get it and it also gives you 15 percent empire-wide bonus to a yield if you're suzerain of two city-states of the same type so if i'm suzerain of two cultural city-states I will get a 15% culture yield across my whole empire. And when I'm suzerain of one, um, the city of Jerusalem will get a 15% bonus, which is less important, but is still quite good. So we're going to start working on taking control of Caguana and Vilnius. All right, let's go ahead and repair that lighthouse so we can get more trade routes, build this mercury, chop this tile. We found Ngazgar Gmu. That's good. Let's do a little check on this era's envoy quests. Build a preserve. There are certain areas of our empire we could consider building preserves. I think our main focus right now is not on that. Okay, I think it would be good for the city to get me some settlers. I do want the shipyard and the workshop in here. And since this is about 12 turns, I would say, depending on the game speed you're playing, anywhere from like 10 to 20 turns is actually a totally reasonable amount of time to build a shipyard in. And I'm saying 12 turns to build a shipyard is a fantastic return on investment. So we will go for that. The lighthouse completed in Marseille. This city does not have the production to build a shipyard in a reasonable amount of time. So we're going to shift our production into something else like a campus. Pop a little chateau. Oh yeah. The chateau makes up for the fact that we don't have a lighthouse. Or uh, um, a monument rather. We've got two envoys in the bank. I think it would make sense for us to take control of Caguana. Let's go ahead and harvest the gold in here. That gold will mean we'll be able to buy a shipyard sooner in some of these cities. It looks like Catholicism is being shunted into my empire. Shrines and temples providing culture equal to their intrinsic faith output is actually totally fine by me. So don't care about stopping that. This city is already trading with the capital. Is Marseille. Marseille is not trading with the capital. It does have its stuff already online. 
I'm going to put a trade route in Limoges and you will continue to build traders for me. Traders are an important thing that I need to get a lot of. I'm going to switch this forest tile to Limoges because I can chop out the harbor faster. I've almost completely chopped out the harbor in Calais and that means I can use gold to instantly build it. All the buildings in there. Shipyard. Um, and that's why we chop. Ooh, and a, a research alliance with Gilgamesh. I will ask him for a little bit of gold per turn, but I do like this as an idea. We've unlocked Renaissance walls, which is perfect. We'll soon want to plug in the wall cart. It's not necessary to do that for now. I think our next destination is industrialization. We want the plus one production from mines. We want access to coal. And we also want to get the factory above all else. So let's get to work. Well, actually, printing is pretty important because it doubles the yields from great works of writing. So that would be nice early, early tourism. And the earlier you start getting tourism, the better. You can see we actually already have tourists. We have five. Russia is going to be a little bit of a problem because they have a lot of culture per turn, but we will be able to overpower them in the long, in the long haul. All right, let's go ahead and trade with Paris. Uh, it be five food, three production, which is perfect. Eventually, I would like Poland to be my ally. So it is kind of disappointing that you have um, angered them to the point where they hate you. Having allies is very valuable in a game like this. Harbor is completed. We have a couple of choices on how we want to do this. I could chop out the lighthouse here, and I think I will. I've got three envoys in the bank. Who are we sending them to? Vilnius is really powerful because of the theater square adjacency. Mahenjadaro is fine. So I'll start working on Vilnius. I really want that suzerainty. We've unlocked mercantilism, which allows us to build lumber mills, um, privateer, all really good stuff. Um, I think I will pop out Gothic architecture. Plug in naval infrastructure now that we're starting to get our harbors. I would love to plug in triangular trade, but I'm still on like settler builder mode, even though I'm not making many of those. I should be. 24 turns is a reasonable number of turns to get a shipyard in, particularly on epic speed. Civil engineering is a really important technology. A, uh, production to all wonders, and B, builder production and builders have two extra actions. So now it starts to become viable to actually build builders. We got another great admiral, free luxury. Um, let's see, what do we lack? We have whales. Go get me more whales, I guess. Chop here, harbor finished, lighthouse activate. Chop here, lighthouse finished in a single turn. This is why chop chopping is just so powerful. I can't, I really can't explain to people who don't chop how powerful chopping is. And like, you should be making so many builders and chopping so much infrastructure. Because I literally just like finished the harbor the other turn, and now I have a plus six production tile that's just like propelling the city to heights. Grab the granary and the monument. Like, this city has eight production per turn, which is insane for a single pop city with a fully built harbor. Like, that, that's the sort of shit you can do with chopping. And you, you just can't do that if you play the game in any other way. I'm just, uh, sadly. Okay, new deals are available. Let's go ahead and sell off our luxuries. No great works of writing available. No luxuries available. Anybody want to buy my strategics or my thingies? Yeah. Always be selling off your resources because it gets you a huge amount of gold that lets you get more infrastructure, that lets you get an advantage over the AI. Okay, let's harvest the farm to force the city to grow. By forcing the city to grow, it'll get more production. It'll come online faster. And also that resource is in the way of a thing that I want to build there later. Almost never accept the trade deal that the AI gives you because you should be the one setting the tempo there. We're about to finish the mausoleum, which is huge in the Pingala city. I'm going to put this trade route into Bordeaux. What's our gold trade starting to look like? It's starting to look pretty okay. It's in the region of 12 gold per turn. Also, I have so many trade routes that are unfulfilled at the moment. I uh, really need to deal with that. Might have to start spending gold to buy traders. Perfect. We've got the mausoleum, plus one science, plus one faith, plus one culture. And don't forget, this also, th these wonders are also giving me tourism, right? It's not a huge amount, right? By any stretch of the imagination, but it is a decent amount. Eight tourism per turn is like half a national park. Um, this early into the game, like, Huge benefits. We already got 10 tourists. Russia is running away with the culture game. That's fine. Um, but now look at this city's gold. Look at its production. Look at its faith. Look at its science. It's a fantastic city. The only thing it's missing, I think, is a theater square. Do I want it there? So the goal of the city, Renz, is to produce a lot of science and a lot of culture. So I think to that end, mission is being accomplished. Let's grab the ancient walls because that gives us housing, which will allow me to grow more, more citizens. Um, it gives us housing because we are a monarchy. All right, nice. We got the library in the city of Rouen. I'm going to start building my walls now because we're not too far away from conservation. In fact, we're going to go civil engineering and then immediately to conservation because we want that tourism from walls. So once, once you hit civil engineering, that's when you start building the walls because what you want is you want to basically finish your walls around the time you hit conservation. So boom, now is the time to transition. Um, however, in the city of La Rochelle, I will say the 
granary monument and then ancient walls is usually the way you want to do things. You don't want to just go naked walls. Uh, trade with Paris, lots of food, lots of production, excellent. Um, I need to spend my gold. You have a trade route. You don't have a trade route. I'll help you get it. Let's copy the whales and sell the whales. And trade route to Paris, perfect. Five food, three production. Help us grow those cities. Somebody's stealing my tech, I don't care. Uh, we completed the campus in Volin. Could be a Petra game. Don't care enough to get a Petra. Would love to be getting more settlers right now. But also the return on investment of a library is just too damn good. We chopped out the final bit of the shipyard, overflow that into a builder. I'm gonna put a trader in the capital because the city is struggling to grow. So a little bit of internal trade routes would be helpful. Ooh, also Tori. Found Tori Del Payne. That's cool. Did we find it somewhere settleable? Oh. Looks like Greece got it. Plus one error score. We have civil engineering now. I'm going to pop out colonization for a little while because urban planning, in my opinion, is better right now because I'm too busy with infrastructure to worry about more settlers. I, I would like more settlers. It would be nice, but it's not what we're working on. Uh, let's put a trader into Lublin. That city needs it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Let's get the granary and monument in here. I could go for tax collector, uh, but I think I would prefer to take surplus logistics on Magnus. That'll give a 20% growth boost to the capital. And also all of those trade routes to the capital will get plus two food, um, which means there are an insane, insane amount of food coming. Um, trading with Wolin is good for the capital. It's three food, two production. So we will do that. We'll just give that capital a little, little boost, that little internal boost. Nice, we have access to the Forbidden City. More importantly, we're getting double tourism yields. So we have great works of writing are going hard. Um, if we check now, we're up to 10 tourists. We're getting one every 14 turns, it looks about, yeah pretty regularly um, and that will get better. It looks like we're missing open borders with some players. So let's go through the list. Top to bottom, just do mutual open borders. Make sure to check this regularly. 25%, you know, people say, oh, 25%, it doesn't sound like much. It is huge. Having open borders with people is a difference maker. Like seriously. Okay, we have Renaissance walls, we have printing. I think the next goal is industrialization for the plus one production for mines, as well as access to coal and all those industrial era buildings. Let's go ahead and get your commercial hub here. Turn this into a serious gold city. Now, unfortunately, Lublin cannot quite reach Nantes, or sorry, uh, Paris, Paris. So let's look for a really short internal trade route. And I'll go for La Rochelle, and that'll just help get the city up and running. Normally, if I was playing a tourism game, I would actually be heading towards a victory by now at this turn count. Um, but a epic speed game is a little bit of a different beast. Ancient walls completed in Rennes. Ooh, I forgot that what we wanted to do was to get rid of feudalism and I don't mind burning a bunch of gold to do this because it's actually just useful. We want retainers and we want limes. Veterancy is awesome. Can I justify having it plugged in right now? It's hard to say. So now we build our walls way faster. Um, building walls this way is a really good return on an investment in terms of tourism. So it's just good to do. We got the intelligence agency in Paris. Um, we definitely want the consulate and the chancery. So let's get to work on those. Next promotion is probably tax collector on Reina to bring that gold up even higher. It's not a massive amount of gold, but it is a decent chunk. And it encourages me to grow that city. I'm gonna look for commercial hubs to steal from. Looks like there's no commercial hubs available. So the next best thing, best thing is campuses. I'm probably best to steal from Poland because they don't like me very much. And we're unlikely to get a friendship with them. Trading with Venice would be nice. Um, so I will go ahead and pick up that envoy. It's always worth it. Then let's buy a new trader in the city of Plock. Just trying to make sure all my cities, new, old, etc., have those trade routes helping them out. We got the library in Wollin. Uh, we are heading now in the direction of natural history. So it might be good to get their archaeological museum so we can get those online. I'm going to prioritize science because we're going to have so much culture that getting that early science up is really useful. Um, we're starting to get up into like the 10 gold per turn trade route wise. Um, and also we can actually reach... We can reach Sumeria here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trading with Bad Tabira and I'm going to get a trader in the capital to trade with Calais, which will give me a, it'll be a repeater. It'll basically allow all of my empire to trade with Sumeria. And then I can start to think about how exactly I want to like navigate that. But for now, most of my trade routes are going to stay squarely fixed on Paris. This is just a setup trade route. Looks like these guys are actually fighting, which is interesting. Let's get a friendship with Germany. And then resident embassy. Military emergency. I don't really want to. So, I mean, I'll add it. But I don't want to do it. We got our lighthouse here in Limoges. Let's get the granary, the watermill, and the monument um, in the watermill granary monument order. So we actually want to trade with Calais because we want a trading post there to act as a relay for our trade routes. 
I'm going to vote down once on this, but I hope other people voted up. Yeah, it looks like most people voted it down. Plus three era score for a really nice commercial hub over here in the city of Jerusalem. Let's go ahead and grab that market. It's a nice chunk of gold. It does scale off of our relationships with gold-based city-states as well. And we can get Santa Cruz. Nice. Who will form an armada? I'm just going to go ahead and put him to sleep because it's not a particularly important thing for me to take care of. But yeah, now we're entering into the era of what I would call we're hard powering. And what I mean by that is we're not settling a bunch of cities because we would be spreading ourselves thin. Right now we're powering. Um, we may consider settling a bunch of cities in the late game purely to claim land for the purposes of making nat natural parks. National parks, rather. Nice. We've got the Colossus, which is plus one trade route. Grants a trader unit. Must be built on coast. Excellent. I'll hard build a shipyard in here. It's not a very important shipyard because it's only a plus two. So I don't need to buy it. Medieval walls have been completed. Let's get started on those Renaissance walls. The nice thing is they also provide housing. I'm going to trade with Jerusalem from the capital. Although there is already a, a route there. Is that really what I want to do? Yeah, the city needs the production. So I'll, I'll do it for now to keep my capital producing because the capital has a lot of really important things to build, like the consulate, the chancery, and the archaeological museum. That's going to take a lot of production. All right, perfect. We got colonialism, which is a very important technology because of this. The plus one production to fishing boats is really helpful um, for this coastal empire that we've built. Let's go ahead and secure the chancery for the plus three influence per turn. Uh, we're now up to 13.5 influence per turn, which means we're getting envoys on a very regular basis. We're finishing off grabbing Renaissance walls in a few of these cities. We're looking to take Vilnius' suzerainty. And the nice thing is that means we're going to be picking up even more resources in the Chancery. Yeah, La Rochelle really needs the harbor building. The shipyard. Okay, let's commit to La Rochelle. We'll buy the shipyard in here. Boop. And the city's now up to a healthy 14 production, up from 5. And it'll finish a bunch of this infrastructure a little bit quicker. We are going to place the theater square to lock in its price while we continue to develop the city. Otherwise, we've got the market in Jerusalem. I will quickly grab the workshop because it's on the way to industrialization. And then we'll grab walls. More envoys have become available. Let's take the suzerainty of Vilnius. Watch my culture. 117 per turn. Boom. 139 per turn from suzerainty. And that's only going to get stronger as we actually start to develop our culture. Dedication, uh, we can take Hicks and Tracons, right? If we wanted to try to do some settling. The problem is the mostly available land is all on our continent. Would be nice. And Reform the Coinage is incredibly powerful. This is typically the point in the game at Reform the Coinage that I switch. I do the switch where I start trading internationally rather than internally. Because now these trade routes are insane. So it looks like we picked up a great rider. Unfortunately, we don't have anywhere to put that, so that's fine for now. Ancient walls are done. Let's start on those. Um, ba -ba boom. I always gain sources before I steal because it lowers the probability that my spy gets caught by a massive percentage. Uh, don't really care about these. I'll vote Yadviga and it would be nice if Great Riders were faster. Great Admirals were banned and Yadviga was the winner, aka the vote target. Let's quickly grab the industrial zone because we have a great rider that we can slot in there. Monument is completed in Avignon. I want to buy the shipyard. I need to think about what my next district in here is. I think this could be a theater square. That is what we'll do, but it's not what I'm going to build. Instead, I will focus on the ancient walls. All right, we're just waiting for gold. We have a little bit of faith. I think I could pop into Plock here and just grab that one. It's a tiny little bit of science. I did hear a barb camp up here. It's all the way over there. I don't care. Famous last words. I will care about that at some point in the future, I bet. I definitely need a builder in Plock. Let's buy Marseille's shipyard. Medieval walls are done in here. Let's go for the Renaissance walls. I need a shipyard in here, ideally. I might have to just buy it. It is what it is. Go ahead and place the harbor. But I think I will go Granary Monument in here. We do have a builder at least to do a little bit of shipyard and stuff building. Or when, when I say shipyard, I mean um, sh uh, fishing boat. Ancient walls completed. Medieval walls activate. Uh, that's just going to be the procedure that we do in like all of these cities. You are going to think that I am a broken record with the number of times I'm telling you that I'm building walls. Uh, amenities in my empire have dipped. Let's go ahead and sell off what we have and buy some luxuries to bring things back up. We need to start thinking about um, the lug um, we need to start thinking about uh, entertainment complexes. It's a plus seven one right there. Okay, Renaissance walls are completed in Rouen. Let's get started on the university will be nice and then we'll do the industrial zone. I may just slap down the industrial zone right now. And then we can queue those up and we don't have to worry about that city for a little while. We've got the harbor in Nantes, Granary Monument. Always good starting points. Loving this for Lublin. It's working some really nice fishing tiles. It's going to start generating revenue for me. Uh, we now have access to natural history, so we can start going for our archaeologist, ar archaeologist spam. Um, the reason that we want to go for archaeologists is when you're going for a naval game, 
you often have to delay your theater squares. Archaeologists are better than artists on like a pound for pound return. And the we're also delaying our theater squares even further by going for scientists. Um, for campuses, which can lead into a really good late game great scientist called Mary Leakey, who can make archaeological things even better. Um, so yeah, great art if you're going for early theatre squares, archaeologists if you're going for late. You, you generally want a little bit of a mix. You don't want to go completely in one direction, but this is like a general vibe thing. All right, take over Vilnius again. I'll put two more into Caguana because we're going to be getting the Chancery. I want to have a pretty strong hold over these guys and we want to build up Potentially Mohenjo-daro as well, because there's a lot of t culture in here. Oh, we found Pio Pio Tahi, which is uh, very cool. Very cool, natural wonder. Renaissance walls have been done in Rennes. Um, this city is completed the campus and a harbor. It's missing a theater square. I will put the theater square right there. Well, let's get that library, though. Also good to get the water mill, because it's food and production. Uh, we've got the university in Wolden. Start getting those walls up. Now the gold line is starting to become insane. We have industrialization. That's perfect. There's a couple of these cities that still need their um, shipyard. So I'll go for Avignon next. It's up to a 24 production city. Oh my God. You love to see it. So with industrialization, this sets us up to potentially head towards flight where we can get a bunch of tourism because industrialization directly leads into flight. Um, it might look like I'm making short-term decisions, but actually every single short-term decision that I'm making leads into a long-term decision, right? Going for Renaissance walls leads into the long-term decision of getting tourism. So now we want to get flight so we can start getting that tourism boost. And then we want to look towards broadcast centers after flight. Once we have that, we want to look towards computers for the 25% tourism boost across our entire empire. So there's kind of a, once you get to about here in the culture tech tree, like or in a culture, in a tourism game, your kind of last few moves are decided. You can dip in for sanitation first, but at the very least, we are going for scientific theory and you basically ignore the bottom half of this tech tree for a while. I know it sucks, but it is, as far as I'm concerned, the optimal way to play. So Paris has completed its chancery. We're now officially up to 18 influence per turn. Let's go ahead and grab the archeological museum for the plus six culture and the ability to build archeologists. This is, we're, we're hitting now the place and time of the game where we actually hit what I call the tourism ramp. And the reason it's called the tourism ramp, because like I've had a trickle of tourism now, but basically three different sectors of my empire are now converging to generate tourism. And it's all going to happen uh, once we hit conservation and once we hit flight. So those are like the, the, the convergence. We're going to be able to produce archaeologists. We're going to get tourism from walls and we're going to get tourism from improvements. Those three things are all going to hit at roughly the same time which means our tourism will go from like, oh, this is pretty okay to, oh my God, we just won the game. So we got listening post in here. Let's go ahead and try to steal tech. Or rather, we, we established a presence. That's what I was trying to say. It would be important for me to build these spies, but I just, I can't find time to do it. We're, we're in a production crunch. And the reason it's a production crunch is because we've executed a very tight, you know, triple point of, of tourism convergence. It's also why I stopped settling because we need to hunker down and actually get this infrastructure up. Two more envoys in the bank. Let's start building up relationship with Mohenjo-Daro because we want to get our culture up to an insane level. Once we get conservation, our goal is to explode our culture because we want to get all the way to social media for that 50% tourism output for trade routes and the 25% tourism across our empire. There's also a whole bunch of tourism boosting stuff, but the main goal is to get to these late game capstones. There's a few things along the way that can help us, but we want to get to the capstone. That's the main goal. Amphitheater is completed in here. I'm going to buy or rather the theater square was completed. I'm going to buy the amphitheater so I can place those great works immediately and then get to work on the walls. It might be a good idea for me to get a water park in Rennes. And I'm going to place it right here because it'll give adjacency to the city's theater square. And I want this water park because I need to get more amenities because some of my cities are starting to dip low and that's really not good. We have the Renaissance walls in Jerusalem, meaning we'll get six tourism per turn and that'll eventually scale up to nine um, with certain bonuses. And that's nine base tourism, which then goes through a whole bunch of other multipliers. And then we're going to start working on the factory. I don't know if I'm going to go for the coal power plant, but I definitely want my factories. And now is where we start thinking about our external trade routes, um, in particular to our allies. So let's go ahead and declare friendships with everyone we can, get our resident embassies as well, if we haven't. Then we want to check the um, open border status. So we're missing Sumeria. Let's go ahead and get a research alliance with Sumeria. Let's get a military alliance with Germany. Let's get a cultural alliance with Greece and a economic alliance with Russia. So the only person that hates us is Poland. Why do we get alliances? Because it means they can't declare war us. It's that simple. Now we need to really consider about how we're going to be building the nat national parks down here. It's not super important yet, but it is a good way to make use of our faith. Which city generates the most cash? 
Right now it's Calais, but it's not that much more. So we're just looking for gold. And our main goal is to make sure we have a trade route with basically everyone in the game. So we were sending our trade routes internally to build up our empire. Now we're sending our trade routes externally to get extra tourism and gold. And the gold is going to be super critical. And you can see here, 25% uh, tourism. So now the outward explosion of gold trade routes is also lining up with the inward explosion of tourism yields. So I hope you can start to see like why this is why I transition in this kind of a game, in this kind of way, because it means all of these elements of a tourism victory start to converge on a single point and, and, and sort of explode at the right moment. And that's, and that's exactly how I will describe it, is I want it to be an explosive time in my empire. Unfortunately, I think I do have to buy a crossbowman here, which sucks because it's like half a shipyard to buy. Guarantee you Greece is going to like forward settle me somewhere over here and I'll have to let the alliance drop. It happens all the time. So just keep in mind, right? Turn 263, 80 tourism, right? Watch the explosion when it all starts to converge. We're training our first archaeologist from the capital. We could buy him um, with gold, but well, you know what? It's probably not a bad idea to buy him. Renaissance walls are completed in here. Let's place that entertainment complex. We're going to prioritize the entertainment complex because this gives scaling yields across my empire in terms of a, in, in the form of amenities. Um, I will go ahead and purchase the shipyard in here to make this Renaissance walls go faster. Looks like we successfully stole technology. Um, let's go ahead and take Ace Driver so you have a better chance to escape. Should you be caught? Good to keep your spies alive. Longer a spy is alive, the better return on investment you get from the spy. There's conservation. Now we get access to naturalists as well as the ability to rebuild woods. Uh, we're up to 143 tourism per turn. You start to see the number of tourists. Let's just take stock of Greece right now. Takes us about six turns to get a tourist from them. That is going to get faster. It is going to get a lot faster. Now that we have conservation, our next goal is to grab Crystal Red and Tor. Why do we want the Crystal Red and Tor? It's for two reasons. First of all, the tourism output from Relics and Holy Cities is not diminished by the Enlightenment Civic. And you get 100% tourism from Seaside Resorts. The 100% tourism from Seaside Resorts benefits from a whole bunch of incredible math mathematical convergence. And, see and Seaside Resorts are unlocked shortly after flight, which is our next goal on the techno... See, again, you can start to see. All of these decisions are feeding into this ultimate, like, late game posh um, for culture. It is like poetry, is my hope. Uh, I'm going to put two envoys into Venice so that we benefit from the plus six gold in our chance rebuilding. And then I'll put another envoy into Hong Kong so we get plus three production in our chance rebuilding in the capital. It'll just be a nice little boost. And yeah, let's keep on stealing science. Okay, perfect. We got the monument in here. We can go ahead and build the ancient walls. Really want the harbor, but you know, walls, walls, walls. Water, pl water park completed in Rennes. Let's get the Ferris wheel in the aquarium. We want the Ferris wheel because it gives local amenities plus two and the aquarium gives AOE amenities plus eight within cities within nine tiles. So just to put that into perspective, if I go to city overlap and set this to nine, this aquarium will hit uh, 11 cities. That's 11 amenities. That's like having three luxuries. We've got the factory in Jerusalem. I do think the coal power plant is a perfectly, perfectly reasonable decision here. However, I'm going to start spamming out builders because we have work we need to do. And the work we need to do is to do at national parks. So make me three builders, please. Uh, liberalism would be a fantastic pick right here. Visselbanken is also decent as a transitionary card. We definitely want retainers. We, we want to keep Lime's. Lime is still plugged in for a little while. Triangular trade is fantastic. Autocratic legacy is cool for the capital. Is nice. Is really nice. I do think, however, liberalism, if it brings some of our cities up from being unhappy, um, is a big win. All right, we've got so much Diplo favor to sell. We're up to a healthy 400 gold per turn. And this is what you want to be doing in a coastal game. You want to have real strong gold. So the, the phase of chilling is passing. And now comes the phase of excessive micromanagement. In particularly because we need to make archaeological museums and builders. But let's get those archaeological museums online now. Um, I do think that there is... Oh, this could have been a national park. But it actually can't be now because of the positioning of the two cities. Owning these two tiles makes it impossible. Unlucky. We've now officially doubled our tourism per turn. Uh, by turn 274. I mean, we're five tourism off, but we got stuff in the in the chamber ready to fire. All right, let's use our gold in Nantes to get the lighthouse. Um, and we will also get the shipyard, uh, which gives the city like a real viable production line. We want the theater square in here. Slowly work on that later, but right now we want the ancient walls. Renaissance walls completed in Limoges. Let's get that aqueduct. Let's get that industrial zone. Grab a builder first too. 
Oh yeah, that barb camp has gone full berserk over there. Jesus. All right, so thinking about national parks, uh, we've got a decent one here. What you want to do is now, is you want to look for unsettled land at this phase of the game that you can settle on nas national parks on. Um, and it looks like we got a couple comfy ones. Yeah, if I settle this city right here, we've actually got three potential national parks. And remember, these are important to get online, A, because they give you tourism, but also amenities. So let's, I would like to buy a settler, but I can't quite do that yet. So I'll save my gold. Nationalism is unlocked, so we can make armies if we need era score. We don't need era score. We don't really, we don't really care about era score, honestly, this phase of the game. We've got a little bit of a barbarian problem, but it shouldn't be the end of us. I'd say things are generally fine. Okay, a bunch of my cities just went down to negative happiness, which means new luxury resource deals should be on the table. I'll make those happen. Bum, bum. Uh, let's see if we can sell off a whole bunch of other resources too. Highly recommend this mod, the quick deals mod. Very useful for selling off resources that you super don't need. All right, let's build that aqueduct and then the coal power plant. Aqueduct will boost the adjacency of the district here. The coal power plant will scale off of the adjacency. Bish bash bosh, very straightforward. All right, let's bring Mohenjo Daro up to level six here, or rather level three, six envoys. Um, this will get us the maximum amount of culture that we can get from it, thus boosting us up to 219 culture per turn, which is part of our objective. Cultural city-state trades are more likely, and it would be nice if units were cheaper with gold or production. Don't really care which. It'd be nice if I could just get them out a little easier. Okay, cheaper weight production is handy. Uh, we are about to get the flight. Uh, let's go ahead and take... We want to get up to Curator now with Pingala. That was not the way I wanted you to go. Well, I just lost a builder. Waste of production. It is what it is. Yes, I know it was not a wise choice. It was not the choice that I made. I clicked um, blindly and I paid for it. Right, okay, so we definitely want a seaside resort on these tiles. I should probably also get that fishing tile online. We can do a little chop here and get another builder out. Start improving this. So really what we're looking for is just seaside resorts on the coast. There's not a whole, there's not actually a whole lot of complexity to what we're doing at this phase of the game. All of the complexity was sort of in the build up to this moment where we're now kind of executing the grand plan that we laid out for ourselves. So really this, this phase is quite simple. Okay, nice. Plus one error score and flight. A little bit of tourism has been secured. And skadoosh. That means we're now up to 200 tourism per turn. And I would go as far as to say as I'm now in a winning position. All I really need is like a little bit of time, right? I mean, sure, Russia has a really, really good amount of culture per turn. But my tourism per turn is kind of insane. I'm pretty sure with a little bit of time, like... Once I buy this settler here and get him over here, I, I, I so right now as a player, I feel like I'm in a winning position, right? I know you're looking at these stats. And you say like Russia is better than me in culture and science. I, I don't care because I have all of my science and culture is more efficient because I'm pushing it in particular directions for very important things. Like I'm going for radio next to start getting my seaside resorts up. I'm about to get my crystal red and tour, which doubles the value of my seaside resorts. So it's all. It's all converging in a way that means, yeah, sure, technically, I'm like behind in certain categories, in certain areas. But my actual empire is worth so much more than like their random cobbled together mess that they've got. And the cool thing is we can actually get a ironclad and then immediately turn it into an armada. Fun little thing. I'm pretty sure the barbarians has like either killed or donated that builder to another player, um, which is very annoying. Right, so we'll place a lumber mill here and a lumber mill here, and then we'll build a seaside resort there. And really, this is just what the process of late game play looks like. It's ripping up all your old tiles and optimizing for tourism. Now, seaside resorts have to be built on flat land adjacent to a coastal tile. So that is something you need to consider when you're like planning them out. You also need to care about appeal. Entertainment complex is completed in here. Oh, I never got the shipyard. Well, let me quickly get that one. It's not the best shipyard, but it'll do. Um, it'll help the city a little bit. We'll go ahead and get that arena too. Amphitheater completed in here. What do you do when you finish an amphitheater? You go to your quick deals and you look to buy great works of writing. You don't need to earn the great people. You just need to make so much money that you can buy them from other people. That's all. Um, I'll also buy their great works of art because I'm sure there's a few floating around. So, And the great thing is if you're buying great works of art, you can buy the ones you need to theme it. It's like a wonderful, beautiful thing. All right, Chateau here. Oh, look at that Chateau. Ooh, 
And if we go to the tourism map mode, you can see I'm starting to accumulate a lot of tiles that are generating tourism. I'm starting to accumulate a lot of foreign tourists. I'm already almost beating Poland, for God's sake. Ooh, there's a lot of coal over here. I would like that. Let's have a little think about how we want to settle this city. Now I want to settle here or here, here or here, here or here. I think if I settle one tile to the right, I get slightly better value from this city. And I exert more loyalty pressure on this island. So if I want to settle it, I can. So, so I want my capital city, because it's a high production city, to build uh, the Crystal Redentor. Let's take back all the productive tiles that have been stolen from us. Uh, we also need housing in here. I don't know how the hell I'm going to get housing. Probably going to be a neighborhood. That's going to be how. Yeah, neighborhood right there. Archaeological Museum is done in Wolin. We will be the archaeologist. Finally got access to coal, and we've explored the entire map, essentially. So remember, lumber mills on hills. On So when it comes to coastal tiles in a tourism game, lumber mills on hills, seaside resorts on flat. So look here, right? Lumber mill on hill, seaside resort on flat. Why do you do that? You don't need to know. It's just optimal, okay? You don't actually need to know. Just know that from hundreds of thousands of hours, I know that that's the right way to do things. Now, let's get the aquarium because we're really, really low on amenities. Source, just trust me, bro. When it comes to tiles adjacent to flat, something that boosts appeal adjacent to it is a good idea. All right, let's go ahead and settle our national park city. What do we do when we settle a national park city? We buy the tiles we need for the national park. And then we buy, um, we start placing. First thing you want to do is you want to harvest the resources in here. But yeah. We want to harvest the copper and then we want to build the national park. So we'll wait a turn. I'll, leave, I'll probably buy a builder in here too so we can redevelop this land um, for sure. We want to optimize A for gold and then for tourism, which means harbor and then B, water park. Because water parks give you passive tourism. Three national parks in here in a little heart shape. I love it. Although we can't actually build this one in this city. We'll have to kind of like look at one of our other locations. We could also kill Caguana maybe someday. Uh, make sure you plant woods in all the tiles in the national park. It's important to do that. Faith by the naturalist. Make sure you harvest any resources, bonus resources inside the city before you do inside your, where you plan to put your national parks before you place it because you can't harvest bonus resources from inside a national park. I'm pretty sure. I haven't actually tried it in thousands of hours, but in my brain, I feel it to be true. Nice, industrial era um, ends in eight turns. First neighborhood is completed, a little bit of error score. We don't care if we go into a dark age here. The neighborhood will give the housing to the capital that we need. I guess the capital should finally get its archaeologist. It's okay if that's a little bit delayed. Would have been nice to get it sooner, but it's okay if it's a little bit delayed. Let's check our trade routes. We're trading with everyone except for Greece and Poland. So we do want to make sure that we change that. So I'll buy a trader in the capital twice. Workshop complete. Let's get the factory. We've got two envoys. So it'd be nice to take Venice because this would give me a boost of gold in Jerusalem. We can settle this city. Big fan of settling. In terms of how we're going to build this city, I do think that this is just a fun industrial zone city. It's just a great city for military production, it seems, which is what I guess we will use it for. Harvest the copper, move you over here, step in, create the national park. This will help us with our amenity issue. Um, I believe you get plus one amenity in the city that has the national park and then the four closest city, which includes this one, gets an amenity each. So they're actually worth five amenities each. So they're quite good. And then don't forget to give you tourism. Woo! 15 tourism per turn that we can slightly optimize by building forests. Plus two arrow score because we're generating power for the first time. We just got our first coal power plant, which is very nice. Um, I will grab the bank in Jerusalem because this is my gold generating city. It's got really, really good gold line. Wouldn't normally build that in many of my cities. Let's get the workshop in here. Also, National Park boosts radio, so we get to seaside resorts a little quicker. Let's trade with Greece from the capital. And then I'm missing Poland, I think it was. So we're now trading with everyone in the game. We're generating an absurd amount of tourism against them. 234. Capitalism is decent to unlock for shopping malls. They're not amazing, but they're fine. Um, what we want to get to is democracy. And the reason that we want to get to democracy is because the 15% discount on purchases with gold is incredibly powerful for us. It also has access to the New Deal card, which is plus two amenities in all cities with at least three specialty districts. Huh, does that seem to line up with the seven population three district build that we were going for earlier? Huh, interesting that that's like why, you know, another justification for why we converge upon this kind of a direction. Sorry, I, I really am just trying to like really get you to understand that these rules of thumb 
that I follow, these things that I do, they're not, they don't just come out of nowhere, right? They come out of like an inherent, like 4,000 hours worth of playing this game. And I just know instinctively that some of these things just work together really well. So fun card you can plug in is military research. It gets you plus two science for all those Renaissance walls you built. Really nice. And then we don't need Limes anymore. Uh, we could do industrial zone bonuses. You could also do logistics. Logistics is handy for getting your builders around your empire to re-improve it. You always want public works plugged in. You could drop charismatic leader at this point for either merchant confederation or vessel banking because this makes your international trade routes to your allies just better. I do like that one. I do like vessel banking. Vessel banking I'm a big fan of. Is it super good? It's probably not the best card I could have plugged in, um, but it's really fun and I like it. And honestly, that's like 99% of the justification that I need. It makes your trade routes look cool. I am going to put my trade routes into my capital though uh, for two reasons. A, it doesn't have a commercial hub so people can't steal the gold from there. And B, I'm going to be building the Cristo Re Redentor in here and I'll need a lot of production. And those international trade routes will, you know, well, they'll give me a bit. Theater Square completed in La Rochelle. Purchase the amphitheater, pop up here, look to purchase the Great Works of Writing. We definitely want to be purchasing Russia's Great Works of Writing for two reasons. A, it'll reduce the total amount of culture that he's producing. And B, it'll increase the total amount of tourism that we're creating. Meaning that the delta, the difference between our tourism and his culture grows twice as fast than if we were just to get a Great Work from someone else, right? So very, very important to buy the Great Works from your opponent who has the most culture because it's their culture that we need to beat. Let's just get an art museum in here. I generally go for art museums in low production, newer cities and um, archeological museums in older, more powerful cities. All right, we'll buy the naturalist so we can get the next national park. Although I would like to do the two chops here because that would allow me to get the harbor done in there. Purchase the amphitheater immediately. Then look to purchase the great works of riding, particularly focusing on Russia, selling off our other luxuries, making sure we are also purchasing luxuries when available, selling off our excess resources in other areas of our empire, chop, chop, and then relay things down. Now, this is the wonderful part about having a ton of gold is I can invest so much gold into the city and just get it up and running and make it super powerful really fast. Like, super fast. That is a very powerful and very fun ability to have. A little bit of flat land here. I think there could be seaside resorts, maybe. We need to renew all of our alliances. So the friendship renewals are happening right now. Let's make sure we declare friendship with you, get our research alliance with you again. I'm curious as to what level our alliance is. It should be getting quite powerful. Yeah, we're about to hit alliance level two. Excellent. Poland no longer hates me. Which means we can get open borders with them and improve our tourism against them. Every opportunity is an opportunity. Now, the nice thing is you can actually also modify your vassal, aka your um, city states land, to make them more amenable to seaside resortage. It's now turn 301 and we're up to 300 tourism per turn. We're now starting to outstrip Russia's culture per turn, which is usually about when I would say like, yeah, we're, we're winning. You need to be earning... I think in order to be actually considered winning, it's a... Uh... Let me do the math in my head again. It's about 200. Yeah, it's like, hold on, I need to do it. I need to do the actual math. Give me a moment. You need to have twice the culture of the leading player as tourism to basically be guaranteed a victory. As in, you will win at some point. Um, but obviously we want to go much higher than that. So now we want to get to computers. Computers is very, very powerful because all of my tourism is going through multipliers. So right now I'm making 274, 78 tourism, right? Computers will multiply that by 25% and then that becomes the base number and then that base number gets hit by these modifiers here. So the way the multiplication works out is actually very, very strong in your favor. So it is good to go for computers pretty quick. So the world enters into the modern era. We are in a dark age, which is fine. It means we can easily head into a heroic age, particularly if we go for heartbeat of steam right here, which I am going to do. So we can nail a heroic age in the next era. Is this the industrial? The modern era. So this is the one. In an optimal game, this is the one you want to hit the Dark Age in. All right, I need to keep the number of builders in my empire pumping. So I'm going to delete the mine on this tile to increase the adjacency appeal um, on my other nearby tiles. Yeah, I'm hurting my city-state technically, but... Do I sound like I give a damn? University has been completed in Marseille. It's got the campus, it's got the harbor, it's got the production from the tiles, um, which means we can either go, probably should go for the water park now, to get those amenities. Art Museum is completed in Avignon. 
Let's go ahead and I will purchase that luxury. Uh, more importantly, we want to purchase great works of art. Perfect. We bought some great works. We filled them out. We still need to get these archaeologists out. I've got an archaeologist coming out here. I just bought this archaeologist. And where is the next one? Paris, Wolin, and Leon. Okay, so we've got them all coming. They're on their way. <gasps> you can't plant forests in your allies' territory. No. Oh, well. I thought you could do that. I, I don't know why I remember being able to do that. All the alerts on the right side of the screen got too much for me. Seaside Resort is being placed for the first time. That's excellent. These are now going to generate tourism from me. So it looks like we're going to get um, what I call scientist leapfrogged. Basically, the AI got so far ahead in terms of scientists that they all built up enough points to take all of this great scientists in a single turn. So now that Albert Einstein is gone, all the great scientists of this era are going to go in a single turn because they all overflowed. It's a really crappy consequence of like how the game systems work because I don't even have a chance to like intercept and buy it. It's all going to happen in between my turn. Um, if I wanted to change that outcome, I would have had to start doing something about it like many, 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 many turns ago. I will go ahead and start the Crystal Red and Tor. And I'm going to place it on this quarry because it's the lowest production tile in the city. It will take 50 turns. However, I was kind of hoping for a great engineer that would help me build that. But alas, aluminium appeared in this tile, sadly. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's fine. So it's not what I wanted to do with that tile. All right, first archaeological museum is filled up. Let's click the theming button on the mod that I use. And it looks like we will be able to theme a museum once we fill out Paris. Very nice. Four envoys remaining. I guess we can yoink Mahenjadaro. Harbor completed in Blera, whatever the city is called. So let's go ahead and buy the shipyard and then we'll get started on the industrial zone. Get a builder before you do that. I'll promote Pingala just for the extra little bit of error score from fully promoting a governor. It's not really actually that important what we do with him. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this one is already themed, actually. So we don't need to do anything. Awesome. We've got a themed museum. It's perfect. Uh, we just got an amphitheater, which means we should buy more great works, which is the power of having all this money that we have. Make sure we buy them from Russia, ideally. We did get one from Russia and from Gilgamesh. That's fine. Seaside resorts are starting to come online in a beautiful, beautiful fashion. We're up to 300 tourism per turn. Okay, Limoges has built a bunch of builders. I think a very useful thing for it to build for me now is settlers. So we can claim more land. The more land we claim, the more um, electricity things we can build, which will form a significant portion of our late game tourism. All right, extract this artifact. I guess I'll take a Jerusalem one. I still need one more from you, so we'll go steal from other players. I do love stealing artifacts from other players. It is quite fun. A gradient dust storm. Uh, talking about Plock, I think I'm going to take another art museum. I have a few of those in queue. We finally got the Renaissance walls in Nantes. Um, there could be something to be said to go for the seaport. It is worth gold, science, and food. Um, and it's also just kind of fun to have a city just make a lot of money, just, just for the crack. Uh, and then we'll go for the theater square. Hmm, just barely not at well, I guess this is not enough appeal in here. So I'll just put a um chateau here. That's fine. Sometimes you gotta do a chateau. My name is Otto. I like to get Blato. Everywhere else we just cram in what we can. We got the Aquarium Rents. We are now starting to hit higher levels of um thingies. Um buy those luxuries just to keep cities happy sell those luxuries to keep the money going make sure we're selling off everything selling it off in chunks because remember that gold is like momentum we can just shove gold into our cities and make so much like i think what are we up to now uh 700 gold per turn very very excellent let's grab our library grab our university seaport's cool and all but you know um taking a look at our museums we can theme we can do a little bit of swapping to theme now they're both themed, perfect. So we'll have to we'll have to extract more great works to, to or artifacts to theme further. But yeah, oh yeah, I wanted I wanted to show off that that uh, scientist cascade. You'll notice um, these two scientists, these three scientists, were all recruited on the exact same turn, and that's what we call the scientist cascade. Alfred Nobel, Alan Turing, and Yaniki were all recruited on the same turn, and that's because the recruitment of uh, Albert Einstein reset the overinflated price of great scientists, triggering a cascade of great scientist purchases. But the problem is, the problem with this is once it happens once, it's gonna happen every single time, more or less. It's not exactly like that, but it, almost every time. So it's very hard to get out of that. I don't think a coal power plant is very good here. I will go for the oil power plant because soon, once we have computers, we transition to the bottom half of the tech tree to pick up oil, 
to pick up steel because we want the Eiffel Tower for the plus to appeal across our entire empire, which will make our seaside resorts and our national parks more effective. And then we swiffle our way up to the biosphere. So my main strategy right now is to improve my land, settle more land, get my city's infrastructure finalized. And in cities where my infrastructure is finalized, I start producing settlers and we expand into the final little crevices. We just unlocked ideology, which is a pretty important step because it means we're about to unlock suffrage. So once we have computers, we want to unlock sanitation because getting sewers is going to give us all of the error score we need to basically get a heroic age. Let's get the Ferris wheel for amenities. Gunboat diplomacy is fantastic. Trade Confederation becomes an extremely useful card here, although my science and culture is really high, so it's not as good as it should in theory be. Um, we will rather plug in economic union again. We definitely want to keep public works. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with all of these cards. I don't think I need to change anything. We're trading with all the AIs. We have open borders with everyone. We're up to 90 foreign tourists. Basically done with con conquering Poland and we just need to do uh, Russia next uh, from a cultural perspective. <clears throat> it's not an actual domination game, but we are dominating. Oh, Alright, Jerusalem is basically finished. I don't think there's much value in building a seaport. In terms of getting extra tourism, the thing I could build is... Pr I could probably get a squeeze a tiny bit of extra tourism out of a neighborhood, but I would get a lot more tourism out of building settlers right now. Um, the harbor in Dijon is completed. Let's go ahead and muster it up a shipyard for ourselves. See what I did there. And then we'll go for the monument watermill granary, probably in that reverse order. 400 tourism per turn, a turn 318. The optimization imperative has begun to strike. We do not need broadcast centers. You can build them. You can totally build them. You do not need them. It's fine to make these, but would you rather have that or another settler? And that's the choice that you're making. I think it's fine to build them. They are quite good in this case. 11 culture isn't bad, but but do not be mistaken. Do not think you need them. Library completed in Rennes. This is the kind of city because it's working a ton of coastal tiles. This is where a seaport actually is super viable because it's plus two gold in every coastal tile. It'll take 25 turns to build, but that's fine. I'll just purchase the university to give us a tiny little trickle of extra science. This is another city where the seaport is actually quite viable. However, is it better than the broadcast center? The broadcast center gives us plus two great musician points per turn, which I think is more valuable because that could put us into a position where we can earn a lot of great musicians. So the main phase of the culture expansion is coming to a close once we have computers. And then the second phase of cultural explosion begins. Archaeological museum is completed in here. Broadcast center is coming. The second phase doesn't make your numbers go as big, but it is just as important as the first phase. So now we start focusing on getting our culture higher because the higher we get our culture, the faster we get to this key, these key three technologies here. Um, environmentalism, social media, and um, ba -ba 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 -bum, digital democracy. Democracy has been completed. So this is a big step forward for our empire because now all of our trade routes for allies will give plus four food and plus four production and we get more alliance points. Our gold purchases are cheaper, meaning our gold goes a lot further. If you really wanted to optimize, you could do a play surrounded, uh, based around the Big Ben as well. Um, but there's computers, right? Getting us a 25% boost to our tourism. So our tourism should hit about 500 next turn. And I think we are slowly climbing on Russia. He's making roughly four domestic tourists per turn and we're claiming about 2.5 per turn so we're almost even with him and we still have a lot of things we can do to improve um, for example picking up shopping malls for neighbor uh, for the in neighborhoods um, cultural heritage for great works and artifacts art museum is completed the first thing you do when you have an art museum complete is go to the great works tab and buy all the portraits and landscapes that you can find just get those great works in there Make sure to swap them around because it slightly optimizes things if the numbers are different. If you're using the theming thing, you basically just want artists' artworks spread around a little. And the great thing here as well is now we have access to flood barriers so we can prevent any of those tiles that might flood because we are burning oil um, to go away. So talking about this government, let's go ahead and completely reset um, because our priorities change significantly once we hit here. New Deal is a necessity. Those amenities are insane alongside liberalism. And, and ideally, if we had gone for Classical Republic, we would have the Classical Republic amenities in here as well. Um, we can no longer have retainers. I do think military research is a great card to plug in for the short term. It's a little bit of extra science. We always want, if we've gone a, a naval harbor build, we want to have economic union 100% of the time. We want to have Vissel Banking plugged in 100% of the time that we're a democracy. Monarchic Legacy is nice for the diplomatic favor. It's not completely necessary. If you think you have a better card to plug in, don't sweat it. And 100% of the time, we want to have public works plugged in for better builders because this is a builder-heavy game. 
Otherwise, your luxury slots are like these two here. I like Monarchic Legacy. I could, in theory, plug in something else. There's probably more optimal ways you can do this. Like, for example, you could plug in frescoes. That's pretty cool. I don't care about frescoes. It's not my jam. It's not my vibe. IDGAF. I would be more likely to take something like Colonial Taxes or uh, Gunboat Diplomacy or Raj. Raj is quite fun. So I'm just going to take Merchant Confederation because it's a good bit of gold per turn. I'm up to a vet. Now our amenities should look a lot healthier and will continue to get healthier as time goes on. And now look at these international trade routes, okay? You tell me those trade routes aren't insane. Um, I do want more of them to be in the capital, though, to help spark along the Cristo Redentor. And ideally, if we could build the Eiffel Tower here, although I think that requires flat land. Yeah, it can't be placed on grassland hills, so we'll have to find somewhere else to build that. Maybe in Wolin. We'll start moving our traders over to those cities in preparation for building those important wonders. These high yield, so like, so I ho hope you can kind of see again, right, why I transition into those external trade routes because I know I'm going to be able to get huge yields on them later on top of the gold rather than focusing solely on the internals. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what, like everything is geared, everything I do is geared around like a knowledge of how and when and where and why things all chain together in a really interesting way. So I'm hoping that it's helpful. I think we just, we just ban great admirals because people seem to like that. Um, I think Poland generating grievances is fine. Germany should also vote for that because they don't like Poland. Apparently she won the Diplo victory. Points the great scientists have been doubled. That's actually good. Great scientists being doubled means more crap gets that's declogged. He's building nuclear submarines. It's kind of scary actually. In terms of victories around now, AIs should start researching rocketry and building their spaceports. Don't worry about it. It takes them so long to win. Uh, we got the neighborhood in Wolin. Let's get that broadcast center for the culture. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could put a seaside resort on that tile. Be helpful. Franz von Hipper makes a battleship for us in the city of Blois. We chopper. It is almost rock band time. I think we need to have Cold War to make rock bands. Uh, I think Russia will all already have the defense for rock bands, so I don't think rock bands are a good move in this game. Rock bands are a win more button. If you're already winning a tourism victory, they're a fantastic addition to your team. If you're not already winning, they're kind of eh. They're fine. It's just like, I'd rather get more national parks, honestly. There's there's obviously a break even point where, like, because rock bands are a short term, national parks are a long term thing. So there's like a break even point where, like, the short term payoff is better than the long term payoff. Um, we do want to build sewers in as many cities as possible to that we just unlocked to get as many error scores as possible. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and unlock oil. A settler in Jerusalem, boom. Head over here to settle this city. And guess what we do in Jerusalem again? We grab that flood barrier and the sewer. We don't need the seaport, but we'll get ourselves another settler. But yeah, I would say like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Somewhere between like 12 and 20 cities is like enough. <laughs> what I mean by that is you don't need more. You can get more and it will make you win faster, but you shouldn't just go blindly for more. This is enough. Chop here for the Cristo. A lot of my time is now spent hitting end turn as we wait for things like settlers to finish. And then every time a settler finishes, what you want to do is you want to design the city that you want to build with them because that's going to inform where you actually settle the city. And the, city sh the city's goal should be to serve your tourism aims. We got the zoo. All the cities are happy or at least not sad. Buy the shipyard. And you know what? I'll buy the seaport in here. The city deserves it. 500 tourism at turn 229. 329 rather, sorry. Um, which is very, very advanced. Take Hong Kong. Settle this bad boy, Shart. There is a very nice national park here. And this is where the gold comes in real handy because I can just blip, 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 buy those tiles and place a naturalist. You can't do that if you don't have this huge gold line. Um, in these newly settled cities, it's tempted, tempting to go for the ancient walls and the wall stuff. It, you can't. You, it just won't work. Don't bother. You can, you can might be able to squeeze out a couple of them, but it, it's... It's genuinely not worth your time. Okay, theater square completed in knots. Um, I will buy the amphitheater and then go to quick deals and look to purchase great works of writing from Russia, ideally. What else do we have in terms of open space? Um, we have an art museum in Plock. So let's go ahead and see what we can buy there. Go buy your landscapes. Can we theme? Yep, we can theme this one, and we can theme this one, but not this one. So, yeah, simple. This is why I love this, this UI mod. It just makes theming, it just makes it so much easier, <laughs> like way easier. 
Uh, let's buy the art museum in here and then see if we can buy more artworks. We'll buy some religious stuff. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of my optimization is just about getting like national parks out, getting cities out. Buying theater square buildings, that's a big one. Is when a theater square gets finished, I try to buy it. Right, now we got the 100% tourism from great works of art and artifacts. Now we have to drop something. And usually, in my opinion, the first thing to go is monarchic legacy and for heritage tourism. So we're going to go ahead and unlock professional sports. We need to build the Estadio de Maracana. If someone else has built it, it's bad. No. Um, the reason you need to build this is because you have to stop someone else from building it. Basically, how this wonder works is it, um, it gives plus six culture to every single one of your cities. So if somebody else builds that, if Russia were to build that, it would basically make winning like nigh impossible. So it's a it's it's the late game wonder defense or late game tourism defense wonder. That's what I'm trying to say there. Uh, place a the forest, place the national park, and keep developing this land over here. We could get another national park in here quite easily, actually. Let me think about this. Yeah, it should be very doable, actually. So I'll need to buy another builder. And our goal is to convert. Basically, our goal is to convert as many of our resources into tourism as possible at this current moment. And so that's going to require. Just a lot of micro. Ferris wheel completed in Marseille. Let's get the aquarium. We'll give a lot of bonus amenities. We're starting to hit higher levels of amenities. This, this should get better as the game goes on in terms of amenities. Pop down this city. We can start working this land. I do like that the Great Bath has been like a huge source of tourism this game. Like if you look around at some of these wonders, because we're playing as um, France, we get that bonus wonder tourism. Like this has been one of my biggest generators of tourism. It's been super good. Um, also, we've almost got the Crystal Red and Tour, which is starting like the next phase of tourism explosion. Um, so the next phase of tourism ex explosion is the moment the Crystal Red and Tour finishes to the uh, moment you unlock online communities and environmentalism. So it's like this is phase two. There's like there's like phase one is when you start it is like everything between like it's uh, civil engineering to conservation. And then there's kind of a lull phase as you sort of develop your empire. And then the next explosion happens once you finish Crystal Red and Tour, all the way up until here. And like the the like we're up to seven hundred tourism right now. Like the the graph has like the graph has been getting ever more vertical every turn, and that will only become more true until it hits a peak. Um, we're heading up to the crescendo of the tourism victory, as far as I'm concerned. This is like the peak of the performance. Buy another naturalist, harvest that tile. What's the appeal like in here? So one of these two tiles needs to be thinged. So you're gonna be a chateau and you will be a seaside resort. Perfect. Builders are now like 1200 gold each, which is a lot, but we are making 700 gold per turn, which is fantastic. There's the crystal red and tour. The, uh, the double tourism from seaside resorts is actually insane because now we're getting 12 tourism from a baseline five tourism seaside resort. So the way that it kind of like the way the math works out is insane. So this plus four, this should be plus four tourism and then it should get a 25% modifier from having computers. So it should be five. But because I have the Crystal Renator 10, it literally just straight up doubles it in like a crazy way. Let's go for the National History Museum in the capital because it has a bunch of great work slots. I kind of wish they were auto themed, but the great work slots are great mainly for music, great works of music. And the reason I say you don't usually need broadcast centers is because you don't tend to get that many great works of music and the ones you do get fit in your capital. Boom, another national park. The amenities of my empire are starting to improve. Um, buy this tile, this tile, and then we'll do a little shimmy, a jimmy shimmy, as I like to say. Shimmy your jimmies. Okay, we got professional sports, which means more builders are going to be required. We're going to need a constant stream of builders in my empire. So that is now just true. Uh, let's get environmentalism for that 25% base tourism boost. You got your neighborhood, you got your broadcast center. Oh, I totally forgot about the court festival. Wait, I didn't even know I could do this. I totally forgot. I completely forgot that this was a thing. Wow. Well, now I should have been unlocking more. Maybe I should have been focused more on getting like securing the whole bunch of luxuries that were over here in the water. Harvest and rebuild. Harvest and rebuild. That is our objective. How are we looking on the tourism front? We should be heavily winning now. Yeah. I mean, Russia just has crazy culture, which is like what Russia does, right? It's like their thing. But it's not insurmountable. It's never insurmountable. 850 tourism at turn 340. So you can see, like, this is what I'm talking about, the ramp. Tourism starts out real slow. 
and then it just goes vert. We're going to start working on the Eiffel Tower next. Into combustion, into the biosphere. And then once we have biosphere, we'll prioritize getting solar farms, um, wind farms, and then up here in the super late game, the other good stuff. So I'm still building science buildings, even though in a normal um, culture game, I might have already started to ignore them. Ooh, we don't quite... Ah, it's the marsh over here causing a little bit of an issue. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Sorry, it's because the city doesn't own all the tiles. Derp de derp de derp. Swap that tile back, and there's your national park. Boom, boom, boom. So we've got like a super golden age secured. 25% less war weariness from an admiral. Not a particularly important pickup. It's important to get your flood barriers out to protect your seaside resorts. Um, so do make sure you prioritize that pretty, you know, a little bit at least. It's where having an encampment with military engineers can be useful. Um, but I spent about three and a half hours on this save file. So I really hope I, I kind of showed you the basis. Like, if I continue here, once I get environmentalism, I'm going to get another 25% tourism. Um, as long as I maintain my open borders with everyone, like if I go through and I get my friendships, hold on. So if I go to in here now, right, I'm earning about a tourist. I'm like, it's like once I hit just environmentalism, I'll be earning a tourist per turn. Once I hit environmentalism and online communities, I'll be earning like 1.5 tourists per turn against every player. That's uh, what? That's five, 7.5 tourists per turn. Russia is earning four. So then I'm outpacing Russia. And don't forget, I'm, I'm actually, my tourist that I earned from Russia per turn is taken away from their tourist per turn number as well. So really, this is just a matter, honestly, at this point, it's just a matter of hitting end turn, um, getting to the environmentalism, popping down online communities, and then optimizing for science to get to the wind farms, building a new wave of builders throughout my entire empire and replacing all inland tiles with solar stuff once I have the biosphere. Other small optimizations I can do is, is just to keep settling. So yeah, really, we're just in the end, like hitting end turn phase, which I would consider that to be like a victory. Like I got you to a winning position basically. And I showed you how I did it. And that's the most important thing is, is getting yourself into a winning position. Cause I could happily, like, I don't need to finish this game. I know I've won it. Um, the only way it won't win is like if the AI decides to start nuke bombing me, uh, they don't have the science to even, they don't have the science or the production to do that because I could completely retool my empire for war. And in 60 turns have like three units per city, which is an army per city plus an air force potentially, you know, ramming down at all the enemy players. So yeah, I'm going to call this like a, you know, a, a disaster saved. Uh, don't forget to submit your disaster save files. The instructions are in the description of the video. Um, I love you all very, very much. And I thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.